wherever you're watching from thanks for being part of our audience i know it's friday night and people are out partying but those that believe that the world shall evolve around them should be out watching thank you very much wherever you are you are an amazing uh, audience uh without with me tonight will be professor njoroge talking about the evolution of uh, and the usage of technology uh how technology connection will be help will help us in the future will help everyone wherever you are in whatever profession you are we were talking about the story of south korea the other time and we shared and stated that uh, South Korea has about 53.7 million people or plus, but it has a GDP of about $1.6 trillion compared to India that has about 1.3 billion people with a GDP of $2.5 trillion or streaming to $2.7 trillion. Uh, the entire Africa with about 1.3 billion people with a GDP that is less than $3.5 trillion, where I would say it's smaller than the entire net worth or the projected 10-year net worth from now of a company like Apple, ETC. These are some of the things we have to sit back and analyze and think about. It's not going to be a big class. It's not going to be a marvelous class. But your contribution means a lot. Those hours you spare, those few hours that you'll spare and look towards this class may change your life. So, Professor Njoroge, wherever you are, you can write the word invite me or you can click invite me and uh, I'll approve you and we can talk about this. Like I've been saying, the evolution of South Korea was due to technology. Uh, if we embrace technology as the future, we can close down the gap of unemployment. We can put the young brains to use wherever they are. When you look at the indices, the price indices, the inflationary rates uh, all over the world is skyrocketing. The rate of unemployment is going high. We are yet to see a world catastrophe. Before you know it, wherever you're trying to tune in from, therefore it is important that every one of us prepares themselves for what the future is best for us. So if you want to take part and contribute to this story, so just type in one thing and write, invite me. And when you write, invite me, I'll be able, uh, Ben Emeka is watching, Ben, welcome. Uh, wherever you are, I'll invite you on screen and we can share something and talk about uh, the future. So I'll be waiting for Professor to write and tap the word invite me so that we can take it from there. In the meantime, as you prepare yourselves, yes, bring them on camera. I'll be able to, to bring you on camera. I started with a, a light moment of song from Kofi Olomide for you all who know, who know it. And uh, you remember those lyrics, John Toll watching. Uh, bring them on camera, Andrew Newton, Newton, um, Isaac Kableta is also, Bulem is also watching. Uh, thank you very much for being online. It is something uh, I, I, I'm proud that you're doing. Mary Latifa is watching. So, um, uh, <laughs> Professor Njoroge, um, wherever you are, please come online so that... Um, uh, we start off this uh, immediately because we are behind schedule. I'm trying to look through the messages to see whether there is Dome Academy, D-O-M-E-Y. Easter Van Lazar, I don't know where you're watching from or where you're coming from, but welcome, welcome to this platform. So you just type the word invite me and you'll be invited uh, to discuss uh, this matter um here yeah, so when you type the word invite me you'll contribute you'll be able to come and contribute to this world and platform of technology but lightly speaking we are saying that we'll be starting to conduct online uh, classes on digital literacy on facebook facila faisa i'll bring them on camera definitely we'll start conducting online classes um, uh, on, uh, on digital literacy. 
and digitization of people from all over the fields in which you are so that you get the basic digital literacy lessons from the web one to web two to web three and definitely you will be there you will be there this is something we want you to get into this is something that you must get into and this is something that you ought to get into I, I, I know it doesn't come very easily but I'm certain that when it comes it will come forever and it will come to help you change your lives it starts with you peace in it it starts with you as you are brown it starts with you wherever you are and whosoever sees Domi Domi uh, please uh, remind them so that they can um, um, just write the word invite me so that we can discuss the, the future of our world. Imagine how much trade can be done online. Uh, when you look at the story, I was looking at the most digitized country. South Korea is the most digitized country in the world in form of percentage in all the seven phases of digitization, whether it is in data literacy, whether it is in uh, meta literacy, whether it's in financial literacy, every single person from the basic elementary level of education is digitized and no wonder you can see that south korea is taking a huge stride uh, against many countries uh, in form of uh, gdp per capita uh, development so these are some of the things where we expect people to contribute do not go early to sleep do not just go out dancing do not just go out uh, just having fun I know fun is part of life, but when you get time to sit down and study, to sit down in the think tank and on the round table and share ideas with other people, please take it to be important and give it the time that uh, it deserves. Uh, I've not yet gone through your comments, but Dome Dome uh, Academy, wherever you are, just post the word invite or you type the invite button and I'll invite you, or you tap the invite button, and I'll invite you so that you, you, you make the amazing submission. Jingo Roni, you're welcome. Um, Isaac Ephraim, you're welcome. In Uganda, Uganda is watching. Thank you very much. Uh, but the theme today, like I said, is to discuss and talk about the tech revolution. It starts with you, the parent. When the parent is digitized, then they can help the children. When the children are digitized, then they can help their, grandchild their grandparents. When the grandparents are digitized, the ecosystem of digitization is the basis for growth and development of the third world. It's the only opportunity that offers the third world to cover the gap that the third world can use to gap cover the gap between what they have now to moving towards the first world. Like I said, the best examples would be of South Korea, Taiwan, uh, what we call the Asian Tigers, South Korea, Taiwan, Singapore. Look at the, um, the number of years. Within a space of 50 years, they took a stride in development from the third world to sitting on the platform of the table of what we call the big boys of the world. They are in the G20s, G30s, because they took a stride in industrialization, in technological advancement, ETC, and manufacturing. So you can imagine where we would go if we embraced digitization from all levels. I can give you a simple story. Uh, today I was speaking to a few teachers on, uh, on a digital platform and they asked me, uh, Honorable, how, how does it help us? We as teachers, how can we change our lives if we embrace digital literacy or digitization? And I asked them, how much money do you earn? They barely earn uh, $200 in form of salary per, per month. And definitely that cannot sustain their needs. But with their brilliant brains, their teachers in sciences, what we call the STEMs, sciences, uh, technology, economic, mathematics, ETC, uh, chemistry and physics. Imagine if a teacher was conducting tutorials remotely and was doing them through a platform like Zoom or an online tutorial platform. And 
we have about a thousand students or 300 students that attend that teacher's class okay on zoom every day and pay 100 dollars per, per per month and we can compute that or even if it's per year uh 300 students okay or 400 students uh and a teacher spending on them about a hundred dollars spending a hundred dollars that would give you forty thousand dollars to this teacher which ordinarily this teacher would not be able to make in form of funds now you can see where technology can take every platform every profession how it can change lives of everyone technology like i said did not come to create unemployment if it was a journalist they can create an online paper some people that have started journalism then get freelancers to feed them with stories. So the more the traffic that comes towards them in their, you know, journalism or private blogs, the more they develop. If it's, uh, let's say, a physician, of course, who don't need to practically interface with people like a dermatologist, a skin expert, they can do prescription for someone uh, for certain complications remotely. If it's for psychiatrists, they can attend to their, you know, um, people with mental challenges or with uh, psychi or those that need counseling uh, remotely. So I believe every profession can have an advantage, even accountants. They can audit and help people organize their books of accounts in law, in, in, in firms, or in different businesses remotely. So these are the things we should be looking at. Uh, as we embrace the future. Therefore, uh, like I said, and I repeated, uh, please just write the word invite me uh, because I'm trying to look out for uh, Professor Anjoroge and I'm not seeing him. He was one of my guests. I don't know if someone can see Dome Dome. Uh, anyone with Dome Dome, in case uh, you tap Dome Dome, will be able to see you, Professor Dome Academy so that we, we can get to you. So, uh, Salongo is watching, Magadu is watching, and many others. So, if we are not prepared, uh, then probably I can set it up and restart it again, so that uh, I, I'm trying to bring them on camera, um, but the challenge is that not very many people know how to use this platform so if you get dome dome academy we can get to interact with uh, professor Anjoroge at the moment in vancouver uh, to tell us about social capital or oh, if professor tapped that icon um allow your viewers to request join in yes i have i have echiba <laughs> chibe Do professors, we are waiting for you from Vancouver. Please um, uh, try to um, to tap your own. Hey. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you, my brother? You, brother, brother you're brother. very smart, eh? Yeah, I'm going to my daughter's graduation. One of my daughter's graduation today. Congratulations. She's uh, graduating high school. Um, yeah, uh, Boston is good. Your brother was here. We demonstrated. Uh, Congratulations, and... Kabuye. Huh? <laughs> upon your daughter's success. Okay. So I have one uh, concern. Yeah. Uh, 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 you are an MOP. Yes. Uh, we, uh, many Ugandans have the concern that I'm going to ask you. They are telling us to get the national identity card of Uganda. And they, when I read the, the article, they say even me, I cannot buy a land if I don't have that uh, national identity card. And when I read through, you know, more, it's like I'm renewing 
my citizenship. So I'm raising that concern to you, regardless of our political parties. It is not right. It has not been anywhere. You see, even if I am a citizen here, I, I can never renew my citizenship unless I did some uh, capital offense and they just they just put me in jail or sub time. But I mean, please, that is a serious issue. You guys, you should look into that. All right, all right. I, I think you have a point. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say? What is your take yeah, on that? Am I, I, right? I, I, I I, I agree with you. It's absolutely absurd yeah. that uh, b because we have three types of citizenships in Uganda, citizenship uh -huh. by descent, and you're one of those. I am. <laughs> so your, citi I am. Yeah. your citizenship by descent can never be contested. You understand? But, but, uh, but what they are doing, they are taking away my right to be a citizen it's illegal. by descent. It's illegal. Huh? It's illegal. Your citizenship... Yeah, your citizenship, you know, doing, you know the government yeah, is doing that. I, I know, Kabuye, your citizenship is not guaranteed by carrying the national ID. The national yeah. identification is only a proof like any other ID. You understand? Yes, yes, I understand. But, but I've read but somewhere your, your, that article, your citizenship is... Even, right now, re listen, my brother. Right now, I need to get an invitation, me, to come to Uganda. Listen, I lost everybody. Nina Malalo. Malalo That is not right. You know that. You have a point. I I'll put that on the floor. Yeah, not, not, yeah okay. just, my brother, tell me you have troubled enough. This is not right. Just because our people, some people, they are not exposed enough. Some are not educated enough. But, you know... People like you who are educated and you pass laws like that, in the future they're going to hurt your kids, your grandkids, and people like us who are fighters, we're going to hate you and we're going to fight on. I'm no, you know we, 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 did, we did pass that law. Start, start get, huh? Stop get, getting excited. No, my brother, even today, unless I, I had to get an invitation. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. You don't need an invitation no, no, to come you know back home. You know it's happening. I, I, I've heard it's happening, but you don't need an invitation to come home. Hey, that, thank you. Thank you. We, we are all together. We, but we don't need to reach at the point that we start separating. That the Buganda, because that's where we are going. I'm telling you, my no, brother, this is, is too much. It is too Kabu, much. Kabu, Kabu, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good yes. point, my brother. Yes. It, it's a good. And I'll I'm represent it. You. I'll represent you. I'll, I'll put it on the floor when we listen, resume. There is, listen, uh, let, let, let's work for the better of our country like before. Yes. I know I'm older than you, but it, it's a digital world. We are third world. They are doing a system like a license, driver's license here, but they are doing a system which is not fit for our country. It's a first world system. So just even here, the driver's license is a privilege. It's not a right. So they are telling us we are, uh, citizenship is a privilege. It's not a right. That's what they are applying to. Okay. Can we that, that, that's not the topic today. You get today. my point, my brother? You get my point? I'm going, that's true. But I'm going to take it up. First of all, congratulations upon your child's success. Yes. I'm going uh -huh. to take up your point and uh, I'll, I'll present it. And yeah. when I come there, I'll make sure I let you know that I did it. But you have to know. come here when you are straight, when you are smart. Because when you come, when you are not Don't straight, worry. Can we okay. Shut the head up. Stop those, those things. You're so crazy, but you've made your point. You understand? I like yes, you. Uh, I, you yeah, basically yeah. make your points and you're I honest. want Uganda to have a Uganda coffee in a Starbucks, not Rwanda coffee. You know that. Because I, I understand you know that. Great point. Great point. But you okay. know, Kabuye. So Kabuye, work on that. Kabuye, listen. Also, that is about, you know, the strategy. You, you, you know how uh, Rwanda has come up with a great marketing strategy of its nation. And I find it amazing, you know. Uganda has to step up its uh, ball game, you know.
So anyway, um, as I prof as I wait for Professor Angeloge, I, I know you can't. There are very many people who want to say something. Um, different people just write the word invite me, but I think uh, I'm failing to to get Professor Angeloge uh, online either by uh, let me try to get to him so that he's available. Have you failed to write the word invite me, sir? Sony Njoro. I mean, write as many times as possible because we need to get you online, sir. Okay. So I need to... uh, thank you very much. Um, um so ninja. Yeah, thank you, Professor Anjoroge. We are trying to get you here, but um I I think it's uh, um probably we may need to uh refresh the Biamu Kamadidas, Nakanwaji, TV Guisa, Timo. Guys, welcome. I, I know the, the topic uh, before we were derailed, but by a good point raised by um, my friend Kabuye from Boston here in Massachusetts, in the United States, he has a, a great point. Uh, I can see very many people seeking uh, invitation to say something, but I have to wait until our guest speaker is here, uh, Professor Njoroge. Um, Sony Njoro. Sorry, Professor, if I cannot pick you, please, uh, you'll have to keep uh, sending the, the request, or else you'll have to tap on the request button. Um, or else you tap the request button, the, the request button, Professor, so that we... You can see it? No, you'll have to tap the request button, Professor, if we are to see you. I've requested several times. I don't know what is happening. I don't... You have to touch the... <laughs> the, 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 the button. The green button, and I'm sending the request. Can you see my comment? Can you see the Sony Joro? I, I, I'm seeing many comments, Professor. There are very many comments. Okay. There, there's one. Yes, and I'm putting, I'm scrolling up with Sonny Joro, and uh, I'm saying, invite Professor Joro here at Domi Academy. I can see Robert Kakande. For those that have, uh, Professor, we are trying to get you, but we, um, Sonny Joro. Professor, I'm trying my level best, but I've not pissed you. It is that icon on your Facebook page that has uh, like two heads, you know, that you have to tap and seek okay. invitation. If you tap it in the meantime, I'll, I'll, I'll bring Robert Kakande. But it's that icon. It's that icon that you have to tap. Robert, my man. Yes, man. Honorable. How but you, before, before inviting me, Professor is there. Every time I've been saying it, this is Professor. Is there. Is he Everywhere. there? Everywhere. Everywhere. Professor oh. Joe is there. Some Joe is there. Where? I'm not seeing it on my screen. But I don't know. You... Refresh. But everywhere, he's there. You, you tap on the screen. You tap on his comment and pin it. I can't do that. I don't think that I can pin it. But here, I've been commenting on his comment that he's there. Sure. Let me, let me try to look for him here. Yeah, Njoro. Semi Njoro is there every time, everywhere. He's the most. 
I don't know why you are not seeing him. Do I have do I have to refresh or he has to refresh? No, maybe you refresh and will he there everywhere. But 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 if I refresh it means we all go off. I don't mind is the old visitor, we have to listen to him. Okay. So I Let can wait for that. But okay. before going, before going, there no, is something. Hold on, hold on, also stay there. I want to also add on uh, so that you're together. Yes, Joe. Yes. Jojo, jo, Professor Ambuze, I, I, I'm not getting him. Are you Look, guys what's getting happening? him? Professor, see follow our room. Ah, uh, just a second. Let him go, follow the page, so that when he sends a request, I get it. Because maybe, I maybe, maybe, maybe. Let, let's call him. Yeah. Professor, that account is not following me. First yeah. go and tap follow. So let him go back I, and you get follow, then I'll come home. When you tap follow, you mm. tap on request, then we'll get you. Oh, I mm -hmm. got you, Professor. I got you. Now we yeah. are, all, all the three of us are there. Professor, we got you. Oh, this is, this is a blessing. blessing. Thank you so no, much. Stay there so that we have Professor Anjoroge. Okay. Professor Anjoroge, welcome. Here. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> you can see you already have supporters. Oh, my God. This is amazing. It's such a, it's like, you know, getting some something from, it was, it was amazing. I've been typing and typing and I don't know what was happening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Professor Anjoroge. Uh, he's a professor in technology in uh, Michigan in the United States and Vancouver in Canada. He's one of the best success stories of introducing ICT and technology in Africa and uh, provision of digital literacy. I brought him to you today as part of the think tank to help us change our mindset, but also build a digital story that is going to help us inspire our minds, but also help us that are the old people here, all over in the diaspora and in Africa, and also outside Africa, to be part of the new web one, web two, and web three of technology that is getting, going to help us to be digitized, embrace digital literacy, and help us learn how to use the computer, basically, or at an elementary level, but also train our children to use it in form of programmers. He'll tell us about his background. By the way, his background is amazing. He'll talk about it. He was not a guy who was in computer, ETC. And I would like to welcome you. The first two students that will be here, Professor and Mr. Kakande is based in Sweden, and uh, Robert to represent others. But I'll be calling on others to join in. We've been in a Zoom lecture where we had a selected few that are learning, that are parents of a school. But now you have the whole world. This will be watched by thousands and thousands. It will be shared. I know it's late in East Africa, but it's not late outside Africa. Let us start with you. Welcome, Professor Njoroge, and please talk about uh, digital transformation and digital literacy. Honorable, please, just a minute, just a minute. I want to give other people, I want to follow I want to follow. I want to pick my kids to 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 get from the honorable and no, to professor. I don't want to be here to learn because okay. I'm somehow better than them, but I want to put my screen to them. But one okay. thing I wanted to tell you, it is the identity, what they think that it is not renewable or something of the kind, as my brother Kabir said. I think we have to learn that all identity cards are renewable in all the world. Because of the fact that if you have a you can get a bill. Okay, because we'll talk about that after the lecture. 
ebyo munju te bito tolwa <laughs> okay abe to get na muluzungu nsonyiwa ta chenya dala nze njija komela la jaya dalo kuyiga wano nze abana bange ngende mu screen yenene abana bayigire ku professor abana bange bazali te wano this is the, the important thing is not only the kids it's also you the parents okay no no i'm going to be there sharing this with my kids that is why i want if i will be here on the phone they will not go to gain what i want be okay. honest all right professor okay. Professor Jojo is an innovator. She's based in London. She has mm -hmm. a business in, uh, I think, cosmetics and small groceries. We, we are only seeing her lips. I see? Yeah, camera. Your lips. Tell you have to your, your face, yes. Oh Lower your face. Lower your face. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 Um, but put the camera higher so that we can like that. Amazing. Yeah. Now we can see you. One more thing, Kambuze. Does the does the does the pro, does the professor understand our local lingua, Luganda? A little bit. Very small word here and word there. So, oh, okay. but you can continue. I'm Kenyan, so a lot oh, of Bantu words. When they think oh, I understand is the neck. Okay, so yes. what I want to talk about the digital literacy. I run an online business, I'm based here in the UK, and um, I have distributors all over the world, USA, Dubai. I'm just recently setting up uh, in Europe. I think we should be set up by this month. And that's gonna be covering the whole of Europe because ever since the UK left the EU, I realized my business in the rest of Europe is being disturbed. So I decided to set up a distributorship in Europe. So it's, it, should be, it should be up and running this month. Jojo, so talk someone, about the, the products you, you do sell. Yeah, so as sell. somebody, my, uh, my business is personal care. Personal okay. care things you use like every day, toothpaste, deodorants, body creams. Uh, food care, everything you need, like in your in your toiletry bag. Mm -hmm. And um, I distribute all over the world. I'm from Uganda. I'm Uganda. I'm Uganda. So, 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 do you make them in Uganda? No, I've mm -hmm. got I've got manufacturers here in the UK, Thailand, mm -hmm. Korea, mm -hmm. USA. Mm -hmm. So I've got different manufacturers all over the world. So I source from. And I've, some I, before I started, I used to make everything myself here in my house. But now mm -hmm. I source from other manufacturers and we go through the formulation. I do all the registration and then get it shipped back into the UK. And, and then I distribute is, it all over what, the world, yeah. What is your plan for introducing uh, herbal medicine from Uganda to the rest of the world? That's big business. It is I, big business. I, <laughs> as you can hear, I'm very African. And actually, I've set up in Kenya. I've set up in Kenya. I've got a jacket tech from Kenya. Yeah, we set up in Nairobi mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's picking up pretty well. We are setting up a shop in, um, there is a mall called Sandit. Is it Sandit? Yes. Yeah, we've got a shop there. We'll be setting up by July. Mm. And that's going to be my, and I'm hoping to make Kenya my African hub because of the... So so are you, are you are you planning to bring the the, uh, the the items from outside or you wanna make from our products like herbal products in Kenya and then distribute in Kenya and outside? It's a big market. Both, there. both. Both Africa has one advantage is affordable labor. Yes. And the cost of production will be low. Low, yes. Yeah. So that's okay. the advantage when you're dealing in Africa. And also the, the importation taxes and everything, it's, no, it's not sustainable. Yes. yes yeah. Um, okay. So what okay. I want to talk about when it comes to technology and as somebody who runs an online business, I am working with people I've never seen, like literally never seen. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've never met my team in Kenya. I've never, met, I've never met the team in Dubai. I've never met the team in USA and the team in, in uh, Germany because we are setting up the European hub in Germany. It's going to be distributing mm -hmm. to Germany, Netherlands, France, and all the other European countries in the EU zone. I've never met mm -hmm. these people. So when you talk about using technology to grow, mm -hmm. 
I've been in position to use technology to grow my business globally. And I do, I do employ people or like graphic designers, IT, I've got an IT team I do employ that run, they run my ads, social media managers. So I do encourage young people to export. They don't, they don't even need to move. I even, I've got a graphic designer, he's from Kenya. Really good, really good lad. <laughs> I've worked with a team in Uganda. I've got uh, someone who runs my Instagram, is in Uganda. I've got mm -hmm. uh, someone else in uh, Dubai. So we're employing people all over the world. And now uh, my children's tutor, I've got young children. My, their tutor who teaches them is somebody they've never seen. Right. So it's online as well. So when you talk about remotely, when you say remotely, it's something we do. <laughs> it's something we do. We do here in business. So um, even people who are in education can create their own employment by being online tutors. They don't need to physically go to the houses of these kids. They just need to set up their online tutoring sessions and then they'll be employed by different families. So trying to now like a live like this where we're, create, we're creating employment, showing people that, hey, you can make money even in Africa. I'm employing Nigerians I've never seen. They're good at IT. And we want our people to become good at what they do so that you don't have to leave the country to go find work. Let's create the jobs. Let's, let's send you work. You don't have to leave. You don't have to leave Uganda. We'll send you work. We'll pay you currency. You don't even need, you don't need to leave. Just set, just set it up. Do, do a good job because the good thing with IT, they don't need to leave. We're employing people in India. Mm -hmm. They are, because IT, you don't need to leave where you are. You're working remotely. And now where the world is going, every business, even tomato sellers are going to have to be online. Every business, every business from hairdressers, now, uh, from hairdressers to, from someone who's doing your hair or cutting your hair. Now we have this, um, we just do appointments here in the UK. Yeah. You, you need a haircut, you need a hairdresser, go to their website, schedule an appointment, you even pay, then they just turn up cut your hair and leave. So gone are the days where you need a physical address that you need to rent a shop, be there to do your business where the costs are. People just working remotely, they'll just turn up and do that. Then other businesses where you don't need a physical location, the deliveries are being made at home. Everything is being delivered at home. Anything you want, they'll deliver. <laughs> Anything you want, they'll deliver it to your door. So what are we trying to teach our people? That gone are the days where you just need to sit in a shop you know, where you need to sit in a shop and wait for your clients. I'm always encouraging people, you're running a boutique, put your clothes online. We've got all these, we've got all these platforms, Instagram, take photos of, of what you're selling. If you're a hairdresser, every time you do up somebody's hair, take a photo, upload it on your Instagram, show people your work, show, show them what you do. And then you'll see business coming to you. You'll see people traveling far and wide to come to access your service. Yeah. But, and what people still, some people still have a mindset, well, oh, I need a shop, I need to sit here, I need my clients to come. No, it's not going to happen. We are, we're living in a digital era. All your marketing has to be online. Now, I find running an ad on the phone is more effective than even putting your ad uh, on TV or in a newspaper. Gone are the days where people are buying a newspaper. Now, everybody's getting all their gossip, everything, with the latest news on their phones. So this is why we need digital literacy, like the more... Digi the, the more the young people have digital literacy, the more jobs they can create for themselves, the more incomes, because you're going to be earning all over the place. Now, let me say like the journalists, people are now earning money on, on YouTube. They're earning money on TikTok. If you know what you're doing, you know, you don't even need to leave. You, you can be in Africa and still earn money just from the content you create. Comedians are earning money just from the little skit. They don't need to put up a show, rent, okay, rent a hall, do an advert, get these people to come. Just shoot your little content, put it up there. People will be watching it. They'll be loving what you're doing. And then YouTube will start paying you. And everybody's learning. I know any, any knowledge you have, you can use it to make money. If you're a hairdresser, you can do videos of the different stuff you do, the different hairstyles for children, for grown-ups, bridal, party hair. If you're a makeup artist, you can do videos of the makeup you do, upload it on YouTube, and then YouTube is paying you. So you can't say you can't make money wherever you are. So digital literacy is something we need to teach our people how they can earn money. And it's something I'm so up for, something I've done. 
It's, it's something I've done, it's something I'm still doing, and it's something we need to teach our youth. That hey, you don't need to be thinking, I need a visa to go in Dubai and work. Just think, how, how can you use whatever talent you have? People are making money showing people how to farm. There are YouTube videos of people showing people how to farm. Someone just does a video, goes into the garden, says, oh, now today we're going to do this. Then they edit it. Now this is when you're creating work. The camera crew is making money. They're coming and they're shooting the video. Then the editors are making money to edit that content. Uploading on YouTube, everybody's getting paid. So you see the money is trickling down to all the different sectors. The, you know, the photographers are making money. If you don't have the camera, oh, you can even just use your phone. You just have to have a little bit, because well, if you're going into things like YouTube and everything, you have to you have just a little bit of digital literacy, how you're going to be doing it. But even if you don't know, you can still hire people to help you, like uh, the graphic designers, the editors to edit your content. So everybody's earning money, and then you're putting it out there, just showing people how we be. I've seen channels of mechanics. There are YouTube channels of mechanics showing people how you can fix... Uh, a Land Rover, if your Land Rover breaks, someone does a channel to BMW. If your BMW breaks and you're in, there's this Nigerian boy, he has a channel of um, BMWs showing people how to manage a BMW in Africa. And it has so many subscribers because there are many people who drive these cars and they struggle with them. So he's done a whole channel showing them how you do this, how you do that. And he's using his knowledge. His YouTube channel has lots of stuff. He's making money and uh, showing people how things are done. And also people with BMWs, because they've seen this content, are bringing their BMWs to his garage. So he's, at the same time, though, he's making money on YouTube. He's creating, okay, marketing for himself. It is the way to go. So, uh, uh, Jojo, thank you very much for your contribution. Yeah. I'll now uh, give Professor Njoroge uh, the chance to introduce himself to the uh, people that are here and give you a feel how you get there. Now, you've stated clearly that you want the drive of your business to be uh, the digital platforms. But for you to achieve that, there must be connectivity, there must be literacy. People yeah. must know how to even use mobile money to either send money or receive money. You would yeah. imagine how many people in the consuming population are connected uh, digitally to the transfer and movement of money. So like you said, technology is broad. In finance, there is FinTech innovations around movement of money and payment of bills, issuing source codes and ETC. It is there in innovation, in research, in laboratories. It is there in uh, medicine. It is there. So in, in even mixing um, what we would call, but your face is a little bit uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> It is there. Go low a bit so that people don't see your neck only. Uh, Jojo, oh, no. Professor is know. fine. That is better. That is better. Yeah, yeah, but we can't see you because this is the, the entire uh, shield. Okay. So, um, like we are saying, technology is dynamic. It's transboundary. It cuts across. Uh, for you, you've seen it. You're a manufacturer. You add value. You're in cosmetics. You're in toiletries. ETC, and I've been looking at the world demand, net demand for cosmetics alone is $463.5 billion. And definitely the value chain that is involved in that, I'll give you one country, South Korea alone, earns from exports of uh, cosmetics $9.4 billion per annum. And these are the countries we wanted you to use as our benchmark eh? in benchmarking. That it's not the numbers that you have. It's the brains that you have that drive uh, yeah. development for a bigger market. So now I hand over to you, to Professor Anjoroge, to take us through. We are the two students uh, of the day. And uh, if, you, if you want to stay, you can stay. Can stay yeah, there I because stay. I'll, I'll have a... Can I be I'll on and I can just watch? I'll be I'll be on. But can oh, I no, no, no. Stay, stay there then we can we can have a conversation. It will okay. be a bit too interesting to have a, a conversation. Uh from my tribe of Kikuyu in Kenya, we love to have the conversational type of uh you know training rather than the quiet type where people don't answer. And so uh for the audience, uh thank you so much. I am Professor Njoroge Gitome. And I am from Kenya initially, and even now I'm Kenyan, 
and born and brought up in Kenya, went to school in Kenya, came back to Canada, and I practiced a bit, and then uh, went back and to school and got my oil education. Today, we are just covering uh, the digital world, but my background is accounting. I studied in business at the University of Nairobi for my bachelor's, and I did my CPA in, in Kenya. Uh, and as I was telling my students earlier, my teachers of grade, uh, that is the senior secondary, were all Ugandans in the 80s, late 80s and the 90s. And so I have a big connection with Uganda as part of my home. Uh, one of my first international assignments was in Uganda. So I stayed in, uh, in, in Hima Cement, um, in Kampala, and also in Kapese. So just a, a quick preview of me. Now, uh, the lady, and I don't know, she's Jojo? Jojo? Jojo, Jojo, yeah. Yes. What Jojo has just presented us is the results of good digital literacy world. The companies out there, what they are looking for is, or the businesses out there, what they are looking for is accessibility to digital platforms and digital knowledge. Companies invest their digital world, like in India, based on the resources and the pool of resources that the country has created. And a few minutes ago, I think, uh, Honorable Sereko, you told about Singapore and you told us about South Korea and how much the digital world is created. And this is because of the, of the policy papers and policy, government implemented various policies in the 90s that have now matured and have enabled the population to be digitized. So what you see from Jojo, she is presenting what the, uh, the world requires. On the other side, Professor is involved in creating the resources that enable companies to get their productivity and improve their productivity. And what we are covering here today is digitization of our learning uh, environment. Right now, if you go to any university in Uganda or in Kenya, most of those universities, other than the students logging in and making payments, everything else is studied using manual or using papers like it was done in the 60s, in the 70s, in the 80s. The world has moved. So what, what you find is that our professors everywhere in the world are behind. Other than using a PowerPoint and maybe using some emails, most of these professors are behind. Now that makes us our teachers are even much worse. The high school teachers, the primary school teachers, you, most of them, the only thing they have is a laptop, if they do, or a phone that can access internet. And the only thing they do is sending an email. We want to change that because unless we change that, we're going to remain as somebody I said earlier before that Uganda has up to 90, 95% uh, undigitized. We want to make that population digitized. How do we do that? The first contact of, uh, of a student in Uganda or in Africa is the parent. The first word you said was from your mama. You said mama. You did not say Baba, you said Mama. So if the Mama Jojo, is sit your digital. face properly. Jojo, tip. Barabang singo yo. Come here, come here, come here. Kaka nera uyonge la wansi. Wansi. Kamera jiongeze wa guru tofa etu jaku gamba. Up, 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 up. There. Got you. Stay That's there. That's it. That's it. Yes. So, so if your first word you said was from mom, you knew how to cook from your mom, you knew how to take care of the house from your dad, these are the first inches of your chain. And what you are saying is you as an adult in the house, in the village, this is the person who drives the technology. The reason why I come back to Africa, even after staying in North America for 20 years, is because unless I drive that change back home, unless I work with the Honorable Nsereko to work with the Ugandans and to work with the Kenyans to Nigeria. make this change, the Nigerians, the South Africans, this change will never come by itself. 
somebody has to sit back there and change. Why Honorable Nsere going to parliament is to make the particular change that he wants. And we are lucky we have a member of parliament. If you go to Kenya, most of these guys cannot even attend this particular session. We are very lucky to have you, Honorable Nsere. And when you called me, I feel like this is one step towards the right direction. Because that way we can even have we can sponsor motions in parliament, maybe not go far, but at least move motions in parliament that support the digitization of our education system. Why do I care so much about our education system? Everybody goes to grade one, grade two, to nursery school, grade one, grade two, all the way to whether grade eight or grade seven, they fall off. Grade, uh, senior two, senior three, they fall off. Then they go to university, they do the bachelor's, they fall off. So at a particular level of education, we have we know that each student or each person goes through a level of education in such a certain way. Why this is important is because when I was doing my PhD, the question I have always asked is, at what level should we interject and introduce digital literacy? At what level must we introduce digital literacy and have an impact in the economy? The, the truth is the the level that we need to introduce digital literacy when I do my analysis is that 72% of everybody who graduates O level or grade 12 do not go beyond that level of education. So they do not go to university. In, and this is an African-wide thing. It, it could be in Kenya, 84. It could be in Uganda, 75. It could be Ghana, 72. What you're saying, over 70% of people who complete grade 12 or are out of all level, they do not go to any other further education. That is the number that is translating. And if you go back to your small businesses, your kiosk, your small businesses that you have, your kiosk, your airtime, uh, your bread and butter shops, most of these are managed by people who never went beyond grade 12. The professionals who are sitting in government offices are also useless. Most of those ones, they don't do anything more than asking you to pay a bill, writing some policy not productive in economy, the economy of Uganda is supported by those people that we left behind, the grade 12s or the O levels. And these are the people that we are now going back and saying they are not digitized. So we gave them mathematics and uh, a professor in Zambia asked us a question. We have a useless education system that tells me a dog has a canine teeth. Professor uh, Honorable Nsereko, you knew that a dog can eat meat and it has long teeth. You didn't need to know that it is canine or not. Mm. So that is useless education. A, a, an elephant has a trunk. Instead of showing you how to do or what to do with that information, you are told that the plant is green. That information is usually useless to the person who is going to start a kiosk in Kampala. Mm. It, it, all that information, other than just speaking English, does not help us. What we are now saying is go back to yourselves and revise this education system. One of the things that will make us go far away uh, and ahead of the others is digitize. What are we doing? Uh, back in uh, two years ago, we started a program for digitizing our high school. And from our analysis, we realized that out of these 70% people, around 90% complete grade eight, they go to high school. Meaning if we covered our digitization in high school, then it means that 90% of the people who go out in the market will have digital knowledge. And so what we have done is first of all, go to a school, our school that we started in Nairobi, we bought a school with the students. And what we have done is to digitize every lesson that is being learned. And what does that mean? If I have mathematics in form one or in senior one, the student goes through the whatever mathematics we are talking about. If I go to lesson one, uh, the, the first lesson in a week, if there are five lessons for maths, what we do is we assign two lessons to digitized mathematics. And that, that means is I take my mathematics lesson and now do it in Excel. Every formula you do uh, normally in using my hands, if it is board mass or whatever the case is, I still can do it in Excel. Then I teach my students, how do you do that in Excel? 
That gives my student four years of learning Excel using mathematics for the next four years. Then I go again and I say, if you're using English, we know you're going to write a letter. You're going to type a letter somewhere. And therefore, we teach you the tools that will enable you to write uh, a letter. And this is, first of all, type. Learn the QWERTY keyboard. If you look at the, and I, and I showed this one earlier. If you look at your keyboard here, there is usually the normal key, uh, QWERTY or the Q-W-E-R-T-Y. That is why we call it a QWERTY keyboard. It's been here since 1800. And you will know how to put our hands on the left hand side and there's always some buttons here to guide you on the left and if you use the other arm you can do it on the other side and the students must learn that as a compulsory lesson so that when they start typing their their lessons they know how to type then we say that in a lesson of english they will write compensation we are making it um, mandatory. sorry in sorry let me ask so what age bracket are we talking about? What level of education? We're talking you... about from age 13 to age 18, which is so, senior. So we're talking about high two. school, not primary level. Yes. yes, yes. That's why I said high school, secondary school, high school. So we're talking about 13 to but 18. don't you think it would be easier if that is started at primary level? So we first of all want to do that at the high school level because that is the school we bought. So we could go he's, down. He's further. giving you an I'm, example of the school. I'm required. doing what I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm giving you what we have done and so how we can implement it in Uganda. We could pull behind here. We could pay, make it to grade four. But I, we think that somebody who is 13 years is formed enough to understand and they are heading out to the market, they are more easy to adapt, they know what is Excel, or they may appreciate that knowledge, they may have a parent who appreciates the knowledge. So we went to high school. And that was purely for practical reason, we had a school that we can use. I think if we went to grade five, from my uh, impression, I think we can still do the same. But let's now, let me finish on the same. <clears throat> when we teach uh, English again, we do composition. We wanna make sure that the kids in English lessons know how to write a composition and make it strictly a uh, hundred percent requirement that kids use their uh, their computer keyboard and Microsoft Word to uh, type their composition. They know how to bold, they know how to type, they know how to indent, all these kind of things in one English lesson per week. And again, we know now by the end of your fourth year, you've really covered a lot of Microsoft Word and you can now be able to translate that. You don't have to go to another college after graduation. You're already digitized at that point. Other things that we are adding on the side is the PowerPoint. And the PowerPoint is mainly for the teachers. Now, let me mention something about the teachers. The biggest change agent for the school is the teachers and 90% or 95%, probably 98% depending on the school region, do not have computer knowledge. So what we did in our school, we got all the 15 teachers to study computers. And what do I mean? If we get the teachers, this particular computer, we opened the desktop, we made sure they know what a hard drive is, what is a, a basketball is, what is the network cable is, what is the purpose of this gadget, and these other items inside the computer itself. And what that has provided us is a pool of teachers who can walk on the street in the corridors of the school and answer student questions comfortably. They don't have to say, hey, Mr. David, now you can answer a few questions of form ones or senior one, the people who are just entering the school. And our hope is that in the fourth or the fifth year, this learning is going to pick up and our teachers are going to be good enough that they can deliver this learning without having issues. The other reason why we do that is so that when we take them through Microsoft, Excel, PowerPoint, and Word, they'll be so comfortable and not scared about the computers. Again, if we introduce digital learning, you need to make sure that people inside the school can maintain or can do simple maintenance before we go to the big hard, hardcore maintainers. So somebody who has a problem with the USB cable, they know what to do. They can plug their printer, they can connect. These small, small additions of the knowledge this is very important and make sure that the teachers are also uh, upgraded. And this is one of the areas that I uh, we were talking with Honorable Nsereko, we're saying, if we can get all the teachers digitized, 
and now try to implement digitization in school. When the teachers are comfortable, it is easier for them to do the training. Now, what happened in uh, uh, this early this year, once we finished training our teachers comfortably, the digital learning, we were just giving them examples. Go in here, we already taught them Microsoft Excel, we taught them Microsoft Access, uh, sorry, uh, 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 Word. We also taught them PowerPoint. And what that meant is that now we translated all the notes into the PowerPoint. We have classroom coordinators who take all the lessons and put them in PowerPoint. And then we are now going to the next phase to make sure that all students have access to a tablet. And the tablet makes sure that all the notes are inside there. Anything that is being presented by the teachers, they can access. And if they were late and they are at home, if they have internet, and I say that if they have internet, they can also connect remotely. However, because the area that we are in, in Kenya, in central Nairobi, we were able to pull internet from the, uh, the fiber cable. But one of the challenges is that we had to pay $5,000 as a commitment fee to ensure that the company is able to recoup its benefits. Yes, we knew it's a lot of money, but the benefit to the company or to our college and to the future population is immense. So therefore we did that investment. And what I'm calling this group to do is be the tech change. Let's put together a digital group that can be able to help the teachers and the students on the ground. Now, Honorable Nsereko, you brought in a very important point when you said, if we digitize all our teachers, then we can also be making money online by digitizing the rest of the world because we are ahead of the game. And we will make, be making money just like Jojo is doing in UK. And I'm sure, Jojo, if you had all these digitized people in the country, you would be able to steal them and use them as data people, as data analytics, as I programmers. Want to, I want to honestly, right? one of the right. things that really, really hurts my feelings is I am so into offering the best opportunities in my company to fellow Ugandans. But what really kills it is like you look for Ugandans who are competent, like you look for a competent graphic designer, content creator, like digital marketers, and they, they're just not there. So it just right. kills you that you have to Jojo, employ somebody else. You Jojo, have to somebody from Jojo, India Jojo, from, Jojo, the from answer Indian is simple. Jojo, the answer is simple. Everything starts with learning. Yeah. You look at uh, the world in which you are, even if you request to be a cleaner, you'll be given a two weeks tutorial about cleaning. Oh, you have to apply for the cleaning job online. <laughs> I, I, no, I leave alone that. Even if they admit yeah. you, they'll give you an interview. Oh, they have to train you, yes. And then they'll have to train you. Therefore, the basic unit of acquisition of knowledge for excellence, for applicability, starts with training. Not okay, with the then presumption one thing, um, that people um, know. I'm going to be asking the, the professor a number of questions. I, mm. I've been working... Um, uh, just a second. If you're there and you want to ask a question, please, you press that button that shows invite. We'll bring on one by one to ask a question and it will be answered. You pr the, the button that shows invite is the one with the icons the green. of two heads. The green. It's green. Okay, Sam, it's green. Where it doesn't illuminate is where it has two heads. <laughs> two heads. <laughs> it's true. Oh, the professor's phone is falling down. Uh, okay, yes, professor. because I'm charging it and I don't have a, a stand. I left it in uh, Michigan, but I will survive. Okay, I'm a so, digital guy. Yeah, yeah, professor, uh -huh. one more question. Your best mm. in Kenya. Kenya has the best internet uh, provision uh, in Africa. Not based in Kenya. Oh, sorry, sorry. The the program you're saying that you're doing in the schools yes. is is in yes. Kenya, right? Yes. Yes. Kenya has the best internet in Africa. Do you know that? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it West does. Africa. It does. It does. Hmm. When it comes to internet um, availability and the speed, the the everything Kenya is the best. Right. So now. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still going. I'm not done yet. <laughs> so, are are when, you talking which part of Africa are you talking about? Kenya has the best internet in Africa. Even uh, when you go deep in the villages, their internet is good. Like now, I, I because think of South Africa, that could be true. That could be true. I I I do I do some of the 
the, the training to the remote. Some of my Swahili teachers are based in the rural, rural uh, And rural the area. internet is good, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, Kenya has the best internet. Um, I, I know about that. I was just looking because when I'm running my ads on Facebook, they show you the, 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 the wave band and everything. I'm not so good at the IT stuff, but I just know a little bit. Just to explain. Mm -hmm. So Kenya is really good. So when, when we're talking about the digital and um, thing you're doing in Kenya, it's definitely going to be successful because first of all, the internet is available. If, you, if we're going to compare it to Uganda, where probably 2% of the population can adequately afford the internet 24 hours of the day. Mm -hmm. How? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so how, okay. how, how, how is that going to be? Because the first thing is there has to be mm -hmm. availability of the internet, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So how is that going to be possible in Uganda when the internet is not readily available to even the average Ugandans? Okay. So I have, uh, I had a college that I started in 2008, 2010 in Lusaka, Zambia. Do you know where that is? It's yeah. in the middle of nowhere. So we had 0.05% access to internet. What you're going to understand is that we can do satellites, Visat technology and bring the fastest inter internet speed in, in Uganda at probably a higher price. But if we are interested, we'll be able to do that. I did that in, in, in Lusaka and I was getting it from Kenya, single hop and straight to Lusaka. So that should not be our problem. Our biggest problem is the human capital. Mm -hmm. If the people do not have interest, even if you get the fastest internet, it's meaningless. It comes to people. So what we are saying and what I was recommending to Honorable Nsereko is that we find a college or a school that is traveling and purchase it. Or we go get a, a whole place that we can put internet. What that gives us is that the few people that are in Kampala and guaranteed, there are so many, I've worked with the Ugandans, intelligent bright it people in kampala mm. you would never make put them all in one place so we can make that place become the teachers hub whereby all the teachers who have no internet and any teacher that does not or any other person can be placed or they can find a home where they can do digitization that has come from private sector in kenya the internet you see 2006 we are, we are at that. What we did is we put in a lot of pressure to the government of Kenya by making hubs, by making these places and making the noise. So we have one Pro hub. Professor, but, Professor yes. can you simplify for them what a hub is? Because the so, presumption is that you're talking to people that understand exactly what a hub is. Uh, right. My request okay. as uh, a, a small learner in your class is simple. What is a hub? In a digital world, I will speak now in a very simplified term. Assume it's an ocean. So Uganda is a notion of no internet. Let's go create one small island. Just one small island whereby people walk in and there we can make a platform, we can make this digital platform, but that small building mm -hmm. becomes an internet city. Usually within the city, you make it an internet city, meaning that if you walk there, you find the highest internet speed. What happens is the officer, people that rent those offices, they also pay or they help you to pay that internet. If we can be able to do as a, as a, as a media think tank or the digital media think tank, we can all invest into that and bring in internet. We can bring in the fastest internet visa technology down there. It doesn't matter where. It, I was in, uh, and this is the other part that I'm going to excite you with. Whereas when I was in Kasese, I had the fastest internet in Africa. I was in Kasese for one year and there's no single download that I could do for less than five minutes. It was the fastest. There was Napster, I was downloading all the songs and I was in Kasese. You know the Kasese mines? Yeah. Yes, I was seated there for one year and that is where I was running. So, so what we are talking about is no news. It is yeah. how to do it. It may be a little bit expensive, 
but we sitting here, each of us know the purpose, we can invest on, on, the, on the technology. Number two, we can partner with a Kenyan company, for example, Kenya Data Network with the fiber data is run all the way to Kigali through Kampala. So if we have a digital hub or a digital ocean, there is a cable that passes there, we can just pull it to our side. Why the digitization hasn't happened is because they don't know whether there are customers to pull that data. As soon as we pull the data into one uh, city, all the other, the other small companies that are around that digital area, they will have termination of the fiber and it will be faster internet. This is Hold what on, we do on, with on Sorry to Hold, inter... hold on, let, let the, the, the professor... Just a minute. What the professor is saying is very correct. But honorable circle, you know that everything we, the professor is saying it starts with the politics of Uganda. Okay? Do you think that what Mr. Honorable Circle, you know what is taking place in Uganda? The internet is cut off because of internet or because of politics of Uganda. They don't think oh, to develop Uganda means. They just destroy everything because they don't want anybody to know anything. Okay? The professor, you, you brought the professor. Uh, for example, Honorable Sereko, you went to Zambia. Uh, this is personal. Sorry to say that. The what you did in Zambia, when you are, before going to the parliament, your dad, your family planned that Uganda is not in, your brains, your development is not fixing Uganda. They took you to Zambia. And what you did in Zambia, you wouldn't have done it in Uganda. Okay? Uganda today, the technology, everything we would have loved all you're going to have, it is, they are saying that, is attached to politics. Even now, Agreed. Facebook is closed. Everything, the, the taxes on internet, but we are talking of developing anything. You, you have a point, um, Kakande, but... I uh, think that second. before, before, Thinking of what we can do, it is the government invite, no, to, to think that what do we want our young people to do? I've been with my kids here. I went with my kids in Uganda. I said, why don't we have the internet here? You can buy an internet, but you think that what are we discussing here? can be applicable in Uganda, where uh, the government and Kakande. the police, they have fear internet. Kakande, Kakande, yes. listen yes. to us. Uh, mm. We understand your disappointment about government. But in the world of technology, we are not here to address. We, are, we all have our shortcomings, everyone here. We have here people from Kenya watching, people from Nigeria watching. They also have their personal disappointments with their governments. But like Professor said, every revolution starts with you as an individual. Mm -hmm. That is why we have what we call the private sector-led development. You understand? For yeah. me to help my child survive when they are swimming, I don't need to first call government to give me a floater. First, I throw the floater to my child so that I save them from drowning. Then I can ask government. Because government, whether it's the government in Kenya, whether it's the government in Tanzania, will not give you these tools. They have to change the curriculum. You understand? Even the government in the United States of America or even in, uh, in the UK will not provide coding lessons and programming lessons free. They are extremely expensive. They will give you what is basic. But now, what we are talking about, how do we build programmers? If the government cannot, there is private education. I know we would like it for everyone, but it starts with the mindset. Digitizing the people will start with we. 
and it has started with you and I and Jojo sharing an experience with Professor. You understand? When you share the experience, then we educate ourselves and come up with uh, what would, what would, diagnosis. We know there is a problem. We know there are success stories. We know if we have revolutionary leadership and visionary leadership, it can help us hasten the process of change. But in its absence, it must start with us. That's why I first gave you a story of South Korea and Singapore versus China. China has billions of people with even democratic governance, changing of government, with good education, but still they are not as productive as the people of South Korea. Singapore was under a dictatorship. It transformed in 40 years. You understand? So yeah. the issue holistically might not only be about governance. Yes, governance has challenges. And we all face those challenges. For example, someone can sit there and say there is gun violence in the US. But that doesn't stop their tourism. But if my child sees that the scenes they are seeing in the US, they are scared. They say, I don't want to go because I don't know whether I'll be shot tomorrow because everyone goes with a gun. But, but what am I trying to say, Kakande? It starts with you. The government, yes. you, listen, the government you lament for is not going to help you. So it's if you're going to sit you back and say, to just a for second. Example. No, listen, you're in Sweden. In Sweden, Before being in Sweden, I'm telling you, I was in the, you were in Kampala Centro. If no Kampala worries, Centro. but I'm, I'm talking to Africa. I'm not yes, talking yes, to yes, yes, Uganda. That is what I'm, I'm, I want to tell you. I was born in Gomba. I went through in Gomba, where I went through. Okay, think about this. You who were in Kampala, you were ahead of us. But because of the governance, we can compete. Okay? But education is everything. Don't think that this technology you are talking of, I'm a swim, all my kids, they're in swim now. If you think that I'm going to talk as a Swedish parent or a Ugandan parent, because I was born there, I was grown up there, and I went all the school there, and I'm talking to that person from Gomba, not the Kampala person. Because you have a phone, there is no internet, there is no a, a electricity, there is nothing. How can you think that we're going to develop this where don't, there is don't, nothing? Don't, nothing. Don't worry. Nothing. We want to give you some simple guidance. We accept all those challenges. You understand? We also agree that there is low connectivity. But let's start with those that are connected. Even when you want to spread the gospel, you start somewhere. I know those challenges are there. That is why we are saying, let's start by training teachers to train children. Let's start okay. by setting that question. Who is going to train? Who is going to train? Uh, except, except the honorable, who is having internet at home, is the one, no. is, the, is, is the one to benefit in this. I said Mr. from the... A minute, a minute, madam. A, a minute, madam. Okay. Because I said, I want my kids here in Sweden to, to, to get what we are saying. They are here. They don't know anything about Uganda. But honorable, the kids of honorable, they are there comfortably they can do this my my sister in london what you are doing on the internet they can be gossiped by only honorable kids or those who are favorable but i want people i want people yeah, but, but but let me talk yeah. about this i'm okay all of you guys on here are older than me so I'm representing, yeah. <laughs> so I'm representing people in their 30s and their 20s. So what the professor is talking about, we are trying to help our countries to move forward. There are so many mistakes that have been done. But the question is, 
what can we do now? Now, all of us now, apart from Mr. Ansereko, we are all living abroad. You're in Sweden. I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in the UK. He's in Canada. We are all living abroad. But then we also still have our hearts back in Uganda. There are so many things that hurt us. Like I'm saying, I would like to be employing as many Africans as I can. But because of this digital illiteracy, I cannot do that. So there are missed opportunities, even on my side. So when I want to help my people, I have to start from where the pain starts from, you know? So we are talking about how can we introduce digital literacy at the grassroots? We want to, and this is what the professor is trying to explain. Some things we definitely, we won't agree like, oh, there's no internet, there's no this, and definitely the politics is to play because politics dictates everything. Even here in the UK, even in Sweden, politics dis dictates everything. So there are things that definitely we're gonna be asking about, but still we have to go back on the drawing board as people who are living abroad. Okay, yeah, we've survived, we are fine, but how can we help our people back home? And that's what the professor is saying. Like he started this thing in this school where he's starting it with a 13 year old and they're introducing the digital literacy in their classes, starting from their mathematics and their English and everything. And it's a really good thing. The hardest thing is to see somebody up to the university level and even can't write a CV. I'm seeing it now. People come to me and they want jobs and they can't even write a CV. And somebody is 24 years old. They can't write a CV. Like just simple typing a CV is hard. So may I give you, you know, may I give you one more one, one thing? Digital is By the time I was 35 years when yeah. I came to Sweden, no, 32 years when I came to Sweden, I was 32 years. I never had a chance to get a computer. Oh. Touch in the bottom of yeah, but, but this is 2022. We we can't be saying yeah, I, what, what I mean. What I mean, all the 90 percent, 90 percent in Uganda, they're like me. Yeah, no, no, that's no, what I mean. What I mean, what I mean, that's 90 percent. So that's Georgia. what we bring it down. Like, we don't want somebody to get exactly. like somebody who's 24 years old and they can't. That's what the we are trying to solve. Long. Because and, and, we are you can solve with them seven now. Yeah, you know that. Yeah. We are not no, here for that say, topic. And this is nothing to do with that. We are not here for that topic. If you love that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait for Maybe. a yeah. political platform because no, it is not political. No, 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 what no, no, I mean listen, that this listen. is the way Rwanda, Rwanda in '94. Uh -uh, Rwanda in '94. Kakande, Kakande, please. We want you to have decorum. When we have a when we have a political talk show, you can have It's that, not right? a political, it is the wish okay. of the now, population. Now, 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 now let me ask you, assuming he's mm. there, you mean you will never have computer literacy in Uganda? Is that but your view? It will have been. been. Mr. Kakande, computer literacy goes beyond living in Uganda. Exactly. And because we, now look, I'm living in the UK. If I had no computer literacy, I wouldn't be in, in position to do what I do right now. So we want to give opportunity to the young people that given where life throws them to, people find themselves in other countries, but they can survive there because we are living in a digital era. Being computer illiterate is going to be a problem. You won't be able to survive. You can't even apply for simple things like a visa. All visas have now been digitalized. Yeah. Basic things like you want to travel, get, you want to get even your national ID. Let me say, basic things in Uganda, like getting national ID in Uganda, getting yourself a passport is all digital. So if you're not, if you're computer illiterate, you can't even do the basics like apply for your, your national ID, apply for... Um, for your passport, so we who, want, who, we want who to, to help them to be able I want to do to, the basics. My sister, my sister, yeah. I want yeah. to ask you one question. Yeah. Whom to bring about that? <laughs> because they <laughs> build grand. everything on digital, eh? knowing that 99 of the population of Uganda, they are Our not family. on that. We are not yeah, here but, to apportion the blame. We are here to... Yeah, but, but the thing is, like, we have to follow... The, the world is moving forward. They can't just exactly. wait for the whole population to be digitalized before they, they introduce things. The world is moving forward. Yes, so they Indiana. introduce these things uh, before everybody else is digitalized. Indiana, are you there? Yes, Honorable. <laughs> yes, Honorable. I'm so glad to be here today. 
quickly and yanabo for the because i'm going to for the meeting you to uh, the professor lesson lecture we have yes i'm getting you sir where are you oh my god Ndianabo, where are you? Hello. I'm here in Kampala. Um, just based in DJ. I would like to just talk a, talk a little bit. I'm in Kampala here, Uganda, in Kampala. Your volume is off, eh? Hello, are you getting me? <laughs> yes. I would like just to, to to say a little bit on the point where Mr. Kaka. That, that's My volume okay, is off. Sorry. I'm just Yes, yes. Yes, for me I can hear you. Yes, I was saying instead of just thing, because there's there, there are nothing we can we, we will probably get you back. Your your line is breaking. Um Kakanda can return we, professor. Can we can you have the professor back, please? It was getting yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but but Kakande is just lamenting. No, maybe I'm lamenting, but I'm not yes. lamenting. That is the real thing. Kakande, Teresa, give me a chance. Give me a chance, Kakande. Okay, okay, okay. I, we we are here as thinky tanks <laughs> and not policymakers of the government. So we're gonna ask you one question: How do we? How do you advise us to go ahead and? digitize the country with the whatever we have right now that's the key question that we want to ask you mr kakan mm. for me i think like the mm, honorable Sereko is having very good ideas in the parliament but the government is working with like the the God. They, they can't go or they can't think of the population where they are thinking you, 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 you are losing it you are losing we are not in government we don't address the government hang on hang on hang on we, none but of us can do it no, hang, hang, on. hang on hang on we are able to live in uganda i'm able to travel freely even today i wanted to start a company in uganda for digital platform don't tell me that the government of uganda will shut it down i still can do it it may be expensive hang on hang on so if I wanted to train my people in Uganda or set up a school for digital learning in Uganda, I still have the opportunity to do that. I'm doing that with one lady in Arua. Arua is not but even... Yeah, I'm doing it hang, on. That. hang on, if I'm a Kenyan. It, but the government on. is saying that you well, have to pay. So hang on. Hang on. Kakande, you hang up, you, Kakande, you hang up on this the government. You can't even see the valid points that the answer. professor is trying to make. Yes. The professor oh. is trying to make valid points where he's done things in Kasese, in Arua. This is not even Kampala. And not even Kampala. Projects. So sometimes when you hang up on something, you don't even see beyond. You only see the obstacle. Let's try to be First positive. First listen to the question and then yeah. answer. Right. Okay, okay. Let's try to I, be positive, I, Mr. Kakande. Let's be positive. I trained the first Ugandans in IT and digital literacy in 2001. The same M7 was the president. The same government or even worse government was in place. What we are saying, let's play with what we have. So I'm asking you, you live in Sweden. You have seen things that are working. What are those things that we can bring to Uganda despite the difficulties and work together? Give us something. Well, like all the computers, like um, distributing computers in schools, we start with the best, the best things, okay? But okay. all the best things, they are all having taxes. 
Okay? The mm -hmm. internet, because you can't okay. do digital. Hold on. Hold, on, hold, on, hold on to that thought. Just hold the internet at that point. I'll tell you what part that is correct and what is not correct. The part that all computers that are going to be brought into Uganda are tax or tax or whatever number, that's correct. The part that I can take, oh, sorry, sorry guys, it fell when I'm showing you. The part that I can take an old computer like this one, a dead computer like this one donated by a company, I'm sure Mr. Nsereko can give me 10 computers, dead ones, and open them inside to show my teachers what is a hard drive and what is a, 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 a power cable and what is a network that does not require the government. I can do it without internet. That's what we did in our school in Nairobi. I got donations for 40 computers and my teachers used that as the learning board. So we can use what we have. We are Africans. We are used to, to, to cutting. We know in, uh, in these other countries, we can use cutting the chips and fries with machines, but we can use our old grandmother's ways. We can do it, Mr. Kakande. That's what you are saying. Let's do it. Honorable. No, no, no. Professor, hmm. all the old computers which hmm. can be brought from, like, in London, Sweden, they no, 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 don't, go, don't bring them. Don't bring them. Go to yeah, Mr. To go, go to Honorable Sensereko. He has money. He can buy new computers. Get the old... How many are you, can you buy? To all uh, schools uh, in on, the uh, Kakande, they, they are free from NGOs, from the government. <laughs> I got more than 100 for my village school to teach them without internet, without power, what a computer looks like. Guys, we have to be practical. That we can do with Like, I'm coming. I'm coming. Right. No, it I'm coming. 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 Listen, listen. You're being asked by the lecturer. Please respond. Don't ask me. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. What am I mean? Let's go. But I can Let's bring, go like, a hundred. I, I can bring a hundred computers. Eh? But in Uganda, the policy that they are saying that you can't come with all computers in Uganda. Okay? No, they, they are they now doing, they that. highly taxed. Which that I agree with. I mean. with, the, with the I process. agree with. <laughs> which I agree with. In Kenya, in Zambia, that is what we are doing. We are saying, don't but be an I'm saying Uganda. I'm saying I'm Uganda. There, there are two arguments, Professor, towards <laughs> this. And I can listen to uh, oh, Mr. God. Kakande. Listen to me. Please hear me out a little. I, I think he has a point here. Because the capability to afford... Uh, a brand new computer in Africa or in the third world. And I want us to speak for the entire Africa, whether people are mm -hmm. in Ivory Coast or in Uganda. I, I want you to widen your spectacles beyond the boundaries of Uganda, Kenya, mm -hmm. Tanzania, okay. or East Africa. And Mr. Talk about Mr. Seroko, one question before you continue. Why, why are the old computers heavily taxed? That, that, that's what I'm going to come to. I made a proposal uh, in Parliament that for students to basically have access to even see a computer or a laptop, let us start with the ones that are five years old. We all would wish to have brand new computers, but our disposable income, the money we remain with after expending, cannot sustain a young parent with all the challenges that they have, the, you know, the low income, to spend more than $300. Forget to, to acquire a, a, a brand new computer, probably they would all have to resort to what we call refurbished, refurbished computers. And I told them, if we have refurbished computers and laptops in developed countries like the United States and others, then we can also accept them. We can even say three years, for argument's sake, if it's not five years, because a computer of 2019 is really in good functional order with better programs in both software and hardware to consume mm -hmm. less power, but to mm -hmm. also give you the products that you need in basic lessons like programming and others. And for me, my argument was that if Africa could produce as many programmers as possible in different fields, but also give this tool to as many people as possible. And for me, 
my horizon is not I'm not an introvert looking at only Uganda. I'm looking at about at Congo. I'm looking at uh, South Sudan. I'm looking at Ethiopia. I'm looking at Egypt. I'm looking at the entire Africa. What Africa brings to the world's platform on the table, what we contribute. We are a 3.3 trillion dollar economy. And this is so small. This is the net uh, worth of one of the biggest companies in the world, which is Apple, just a company owned by a few people. So it's not the numbers of people that drive change. I know we'd like a lot between you and I, Kakande, but we can start with a few hundreds, a few thousands mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. afford. And I can tell you, in a country where you have 1,000 brains that are so strong in telemedicine, that are so strong in fintech or in a continent. I'll give you the example of the success story of the world. Uh, are you aware that even without computers, the most uh, digitally connected country in form of money transfer in the third world, growing third world, about just below the G20 is Kenya with the M-Pesa. You know the M-Pesa? What we call our mobile money. You understand? Kenya launched the first digital platform of transfer of money using the old GSM network, which was not based on the internet. There was no internet. Uh, the internet was there, but there was movement of money and payment of bills that you would go on mobile money even today in Uganda and pay your water bills and pay your school fees and pay everything. The issue was to remove the barrier and create ease, the non-contact, the non-body contact. Mm -hmm. So you would easily pay up your loans, send up your money, transfer money from one person to another. Bad as the governments may be, at least mm -hmm. there is a basic platform for all of us to enjoy and create much more. So what we are trying to say now what can you, Kakande, and everyone that is here learn? It can start by you. You might be here when the only thing you know about a computer or a phone is Facebook and WhatsApp. But there is I'll a lot tell you something. A lot I'm more. I'll, I'll add something to you, Honorable Nsereko. You are in parliament. What yeah. I have done in Michigan, I'm a member of CPA, Michigan CPA. And Michigan CPA uh, is one of What is, this what is CPA? CPA, so that CPA the Certified Public Accountant or the CS. The oh. Certified Public Accountants. I'm an accountant, but because I come from Kenya, I represent the inter International Legal and uh, Advisory Board for the Michigan government. What we did in 2015 and 2014, 2015, before Obama went to Kenya, we launched and we lobbied for the government of United States as a think tank to allow Kenyans to get a five year instead of getting the six months and the two years and something like that. And today, if you apply as a Kenyan from, and, and we got that uh, when Obama went to Kenya, was negotiating his deals. One of the things that we were able to get out of it was the Kenyan to get a, an automatic visa, five year visa without looking at whether it's two months and all that. It works because they wanted the business people to get the business permit. And we said, if we are going to give you the business permit in Kenya for five years, also give us an, an equivalent reciprocal. Why am I saying this? In this uh, forum that we are sitting here, Honorable Nsereko, if we have things that we can create, push into parliament and create a motion and create a, you know, something that we can discuss at the, the government level, this becomes our lobby group. It is right. called, uh, yeah, a special committees or lobbying group that you hear all the time they are saying lobbyists. The lobbyists, what we do, we get Honorable Nsereko, we say this is what we want the government to improve on, we support him, and when seven he travels outside, that's the first noise he hears. Whenever the Kenyan president steps in America, this is usually our place. He only comes with one guard and a few other people and the ambassador. So we usually get there and tell him, we sent you a motion and you refused. And this is how we got our dual citizenship. We fought it. 
It wasn't given to us. We actually fought for it. And every time the president knew he is coming to the United States, he knows he is going to find Kenyans here. But if we have an MP that is in parliament, that becomes our link to the policies that we can set. So in this think tank, we can create policy papers, we can create, we can bring in the digital uh, or the industrialization or whichever ministry that is representing the ITP, and we form a think tank worldwide for the Ugandans to push those things that we need uh, uh, exemptions from, from the VAT, from the taxes, from even favorable uh, environment. If we don't, then those guys are going to continue doing the business as usual. But as soon as the election comes and they need us, our votes, they need our money, Honorable Bonsereko wants to go back to parliament, he'll come back to us and say, guys, fund me. We're going to say, Honorable Bonsereko, did you do our job? And obviously, <laughs> we have to go there and do the job. <laughs> this is what we should do. We should take advantage. When I see him there, I see a lot of advantage. And I, yes, Kakande has points. But until we fight, for example, if we created that platform school, uh, Jojo, I was talking about, and we started training our key teachers first and then trained our students, and we had a prototype. It is easy now from there to, to say, let's write a report to the government to tell them, roll out this program to the, every school. Bring the Minister of Education. Bring M7. We have to be now part of M7. Although we, don't, we know we are Bob Wine. I don't care. When I get there, I, when I need that favor, I'll go and talk to him nicely. Yes, Mr. King, what another name do you want? Can you approve this one? He is going to be on his sleep and say, oh, yeah, you guys do whatever that boy is talking about. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. We are going to play politics. But just like if I wanted this beautiful lady called Georgia here, I'm not going to go and push myself, myself, and just say, come and marry me. I have to do some <laughs> things and talk nicely. The same thing with the government. You have to make sure we go in with the organization. We are organized. We have a platform. We have a template school. We are saying, this is what we are doing. We can now bring them to Kenya and say, go and visit that school in Kenya. It also has a digital platform. Look, look, this is how the world, and if you send them to Kenya, they usually run there because they're gonna get some allowances for going to Kenya. Bring them to United States and show <laughs> them another, another place. Go take them to UK and say, this is another place. They go back and they pass the motion. Boom, done. We have to do our job. We Professor Anjoroge. I was yes. talking about something the other time, um, and I would like, uh, Jojo, and this is interesting. We have 2,200 people watching live, mm -hmm. okay? And that would mean they are from all over the world. And yes. let's talk about now technology. Now, listen, there is a race in the Middle East of who is going to become the new technological hub right. of the Middle East. And Dubai set up what we call the 2020 Expo. Mm. In the 2020 Expo, Dubai attracted all countries in the world to set up platforms. Okay? That is the UAE. Look at how visionary their leadership is. One, that means every single country in the world knows about the United Arab Emirates. Right. Two, every single country knows about their flight carrier, which is the Emirates Airlines. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. But three, it has opened up investment visas for all people moving from all destinations to come and invest in their country. Mm -hmm. And finally, it has started the production, the quest for to be the first country that will produce one million software engineers and programmers. Why? Because the future of the world is in programming. Mm -hmm. Look at a country that has an original population of natives, of nationals, that are not more than 5 million, but employing over 20 million people or 15 million people of non-nationals that are coming from outside. Therefore, it is not necessarily that you need to talk about employing your own citizens to create change. Mm -hmm. It would be like thinking that, yes, you would need your relatives to be well. But if they cannot embrace change immediately, if they cannot understand you, use the brains of your neighbors to improve it. They'll enjoy the profit. These Arabs understood one thing, that our people might not be very bright, but we might be gifted with visionary leadership. Our people might not be overcommitted to working, but if I can pick someone 
from the United Kingdom to start up Emirates Airlines and run it and manage it, I'll give it to them. When it comes to Africans, if they were to hire someone with the technology, someone with the technical capability to execute something, they would say, ah, no, 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 no. You have to hire our own. No. Look at the vision of these people. The Arab world, the way it's growing. The issue is to not to hire your native necessarily. They look for the best brain in India, the best brain in the U.S. to do the job. But they won't take you to take. Their investment is not in giving you their natural resources, but it's in hiring the best brain to help them manage. Now, in Africa, what we do is we bring <laughs> the so-called investor, give them the natural resource, give them tax waivers, give them free land. After 10 years, they walk away. You remember when you talked about copper? Yes. Now, if we are to talk about the new wave of technology, we are going to green and, uh, you know, like clean energy. Clean You're using electric cars, isn't it, George? Yes. Or hybrid yes. cars. What do they use, basically? They are based on technology. Electricity and technology. Okay, now, it's electricity and cobalt, batteries, lithium. Yeah. I mean, which is now which is now in short. There's a there's a massive shortage of it. All right. Globally, yeah. And where where is it? Where are these minerals? Africa. Most of them. Um, most of them are in Africa. Then there's some in um, Australia in and Brazil. Okay. Yeah. In All South right. America. Yeah. And China. But listen, where they are hugely unexploited by the nationals is mainly in Africa. Mm. You understand? So you have to go to Glencore and those big companies and uh, Rio Tinto to come and exploit your cobalt from DRC, from Uganda, mm -hmm. from South Sudan, and take it, process it, and return batteries for you. But you know that the world demand for cobalt annually is more than a trillion dollar. Then Africa, after that, borrows African presidents, 52 of them, are invited. Russia, Africa summit, they go there to beg. America, Africa summit, they go there to beg. China, Africa summit, they go there to beg, not knowing that they are the owners of these resources. Now, it starts with basic education. There is nothing you're going to do now to critically change government, but you can change them through enforcing your own policies, through mindset change. When people are technologically connected, you'll find someone devising just one software, for example, of real-time translation of languages. Probably Mr. Kakanda would be better speaking in Luganda and professor <laughs> listening in Kikuyu, responding oh, to yeah. him in Kikuyu. And yeah, because, he understands. Uh, even social media has done that because Facebook is translating uh, no, languages now. No, yeah. no, but, but not in real time audio. I just put on an audio there when we can have an audio visual conversation. You speak in Chinese. Yeah, but, yeah, but, I, no, that is already, Mr. Seleko, that's already available. If you look at the, like, when the European leaders, Meet. No, no, they no, German no, no. Are like German, no, but no, no, they don't no. have Kikuyu no, to Luganda. What, what you're talking oh, about? Oh, you say the local languages. Yes, no, Jojo, Kikuyu Jojo, to Luganda. Jojo, in technology, what you're talking about, the translators are seated in the booth. There is a third party. Not the machine. Not the machine. Now ah. <laughs> we want to yes. Now the professor. We are still analog, you, and Jojo. We are still that, very analog. <laughs> that there is something called machine learning. The machine should be able to learn your language, process it, and translate it into uh, 3,000 other dialects. Ah, uh, that's going to take another 50 years. No, 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 no. no. Agreed, agreed, Jojo, agreed. But Good. it will take me and you to first start with the Kikuyu yes. and, and Uganda. 
Yes. Then tomorrow that's gonna we take get... another fifty years. No, let's, no, let's a, no, no, no. The technology is here with us. The Jojo, technology Jojo, is here Jojo, with us. Jojo, Jojo, that is the wrong mentality. No, okay. Don't don't, don't worry. Yeah, when, you're right. You're right. One hundred years, <laughs> one hundred years ago, when Nikola Tesla in 1926, when he told them you would have a mobile phone, you know what they told him? <laughs> no, that it will take one, one million years. In a space of 43 years, in the 70s, someone had come up with a mobile phone. And people mm. were talking in New York. Therefore, some amazing guy in Ghana has already finished translating, doing that, in 25 languages. But if, if we can't... If we can start with our local languages, just even like, let me say, just within Kenya, just within Uganda, like, let me say, Kenya, Kenya has so many languages between themselves. Yes. Oh, or Swahili to Luganda, Fine. Swahili to Kikuyu, that's it. Fine. Oh, but my let's God. Let's not veer off the point. Professor, please take it from there. How do we start right. digitizing so, our people? So, that was a commercial break. It's no, 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 no. It is in the center. <laughs> it is in the center of the debate. As a professor, I have to allow debate to be off because we can see Kakande had good points, but we have to work out around the same. Uh, Jojo, you can see she now holds on the on the business corner and says it's not possible. And we, as the scholars, we are saying the technology is here with us. How can we make it possible? And unless we put an, an element of profitability around it, businesses will not pick it up. Uh, I'll just go back to that conversation between the translation and forget about the machine first. Today, uh, Jojo, if there is nothing that translates Swahili to Uganda. If you are to speak Swahili, you have to go to a third language called English or French before you can yeah. translate to Uganda. Just forget about the digital even the analog portion. And that's our biggest pro problem. And this takes us to the 1980s and the 90s. You remember if you wanted to go to West Africa, you had to take, if I'm from Nairobi, you'd have to take a flight to, to Paris or to London back to West Africa. Somebody said in uh, Kenya Airways, no, forget about this nonsense. Let's have a crossover to, to three hours flight. And no, nowadays you see a, a Nigerian jumping to Nairobi and all these kind of things happening. Somebody deliberately said no. And we are going to say deliberately, no, we're going to create our own school. Yeah, the government, yes, 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 the government. But if we create a prototype where people can see a digital learning, say somebody has land. Jojo, you have some land in... in, in no, 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 professor, no. professor, don't go even there. Let the, before you go to the physical school and online school teaching adults, we have two points. Let, let, to let, 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 me, let me take the conversation. Let's go to, to that place and we say for our online digital platform, we need some places where we may have some internet. We will yes. need an office with high speed internet, even if it is digital learning platform. We yes. need to get a few Ugandans who are very bright, and I look at the best of the best here, and I'm very sure we are not the best. If we say bring a competition, uh, it is going to be a brutal battle before you even get number 1,000 in Uganda alone. So what yeah. you're saying is if we set up a small shop, and why I'm saying physical, because physical empowers the digital transformation. If you have a location in Uganda, put internet, now you can hire all these young minds, even on temporary basis to come and do your applications. All the apps in Nairobi that are done, all the mobile apps, and Kenya is one of the fastest and the largest producer of all mobile apps, is the digital hub that has been created in Mirimani, not by government, by individuals. It's iHub. If you go go iHub, you can go there and if you wanted employees of, of any type of mobile app, you find them there. Do you know what happens? That iHub, they connected it with high-speed internet before high-speed internet all over the country. So we need to find that hub in Kampala or if outside Kampala, we can put this In Lagos, in Lagos, yes. in Nairobi. Let me, let, me, let, me concentrate, let me concentrate on Uganda. And the reason why I go to Uganda is because the audience here is Ugandan is 
passionate. When I say Arua, you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> when I say Kachese, you understand. When I say he must cement, you understand what When I say M7, you know what I'm saying? These are, even if I'm not speaking Luganda, it's your lingo. So what I'm saying is if we get that digital place, uh, uh, now we can put our digital experts there. We can ha have Mr. Akiki to deal with the crypto. We can have Jojo to come and show us what she wants to create from that point. Mm -hmm. Now we can create a digital platform and have a Uganda presence in the digital world. Don't worry, it may be very, very small, but it is Uganda. The longest journey starts for you. The reason why I say high schoolers is because if you ask yourself, who has more time? Is it Jojo or a form three or senior three students in Uganda? The senior three students on Saturday, Sunday, they do nothing other than their homework. Mm -hmm. So if you give them a homework to go and de design a, an app and you told them, if you finish this app, you're not going to pay your school fees, guaranteed the parent will be there, I'm saving my school fees, and they are going to be every day there. So that's what we have done. We've picked the students, and students are doing those things for themselves. All they need is a teacher that guides in whatever digital platform we need. Create that digital platform for teachers. Then get all the teachers to come there and train from that corner. You're going to spin out in five years the largest army of digital warriors. Yes. The key is you create digital warriors in Kampala. And now every wow. company, you even One saw Facebook. You even saw, hang on. You even saw Facebook in Nairobi trying to buy the iHub because they cannot contend with what is happening there. Apple has a presence in iHub in Nairobi because those Amazon. iPhone and mobile app warriors, they are brutal. Yes, uh, Jojo. Yeah. So one thing I've always noticed, um, I do business with so many people around the world. And one thing I noticed about the Kenyans, like let me say particularly in Africa, it's the Kenyans and the Nigerians. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the IT, they're just in a different league all together. So every time now, like with these, um, there is this app called a Fiverr. It's where you yeah. find free, you know Fiverr. Mm -hmm. So you the find one for translating. Yes, yes. Sorry. The, uh, is it the one for translating uh, documents? I have five. I don't know whether that's the same. No, talking. no, no. That's why you find any anything digital. You are looking for graphic designers. You're looking for content yeah, creators. Yeah, looking yeah. For there are quite a few. You find them on one. Fiverr. Yeah, so um, Fiverr, I, yeah. I use I use Fiverr when I started my business and I could not uh, afford proper <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, when I could not afford things I used to go mm -hmm. to Fiverr and outsource um, graphic uh, designers and uh, and so many people there because it was cheaper. Then one thing I noticed is like the Africans are seeing there because you go through them when you put your work out there like like I'm looking for someone to do my email marketing. These people are doing Clavio and all yeah. these other things. Yeah. So you put your, your your work up there and then you look at the people whom they listed who are good. Then I would even specify their location. So when I put the location and in, in the filter and I'll be like Africa. So the Africans that would come up, Nigerians, top of the list, Kenyans then I was thinking, why are these people good in the digital space? Where is the Ugandan? I didn't see a single Ugandan on Fiverr. It was the Nigerians. It was the, the Kenyans. There, there are a couple of like uh, Zimbabweans, uh, South Africans, Zambia, and definitely in the North, Morocco, Egypt, and all that. Then I was thinking, where are the Ugandans? How comes what what do you think you as a kenyan that has helped kenya because i don't know what's happening in nigeria i've never been what what has really helped kenya to dominate the digital space are they are you guys introducing digital literacy at a younger age what isn't uganda doing why why are we missing out so i would uh, let me talk my experience 25 years ago i was among us the first digitized people that is 1995, 96. I was among the first digitized people in Kenya. And these are the people who you would you go to a cyber cafe to African online when it was owned by some Kenyans and would use only internet. Whatever happened, most cases is you go to your back to your village and you recruit these boys and girls that would want to learn computers and you would sit with your computer without internet. We most likely use it without internet. There's still a lot of problems in Kenya without the internet. So most of the people, what they do, anything that can be done offline and only come back on online, even those apps, most of them are developed offline and then they do 
online. So mm -hmm. most of them, they will spend their time on the, on the computer side. For example, my nephew, who has refused to come to United States completely, is able to earn his $5,000 every month because he is able to do his work from home. But this is things that we have trained them. We have, we have refused to be dictated to by the government. We have mm -hmm. also refused to reject the, the politicians' way. We are saying, in life, you are, you are going to, to fix your own life. So go to your cousins, go to your, to your, to your brothers, go yeah, to that's, your... But, Professor, that's and what I'm asking. I can asking. tell you, that's out of my right. 44... How have you guys, guys how have you you. got more digitalized really well that now you're exporting your expertise globally we, that we... That's now I do I do have Ugandans come to me and they can't even write a CV. Right, because what we did is you you, you must go back to two thousand and one, two thousand and seven. That is the period that was uh, we were in the same state where Uganda is right now. We were able to do a lot of push. We were doing work conferences. We would do everything. We would jump up and down. We would train whoever it is. We would fight the Indians that were brought by ministers and other government companies to come and do work for us. We are saying, let's do it ourselves. The biggest turning point is when the Safaricom took the digital world by storm when they brought in the, the emphasis on digital. The, uh, uh, the, the app itself was in, uh, incepted in, uh, from UK, was funded by money from UK, but the development itself happened in Nairobi. Everything happened in, actually, if you have been to Nairobi, in the rural area of Muranga. This is where it started testing. But once people got to the feel of it, because it also comes to the conversation we are having here. Do you carry this conversation and go back home and say, oh, it will never happen? Or do you see it as an opportunity? <laughs> do you see it as an opportunity? Because when I look at... Everything, um, everything can happen. Everything can happen. Like I said, I like when, 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 when I'm here in the UK and I'm sourcing for work, mm -hmm. and definitely you've got a spirit of the continent. You'll be like, you know what? I want to give this work to somebody in Africa. I'm not giving this work for somebody in Germany, no. So you right. go there, you, you, you filter Africa. Guess what's coming? Kenya, Nigeria, Egypt, this. And you're like, okay, where, where is your tribe? <laughs> two, two, tribe, two tribes that are driving that workforce is the Ebos in Nigeria. They love money. And Kikuyus of Kenya, we love money. So as soon as we were able to attach the digitization to money... But even us, the Baganda, we love no, money. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes, but as soon as we were able to attach value to the digitization and not land and property, if you go to Nairobi... Junior graduate, tribe, Onduri, junior graduate, Onduri, please, please, your invite. He, he, he has burning questions. Right. So, so it's a multitude of things, uh, 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 Jojo. It was first, we were rejecting the government. You remember at 2007, we were fighting the government and all these things. We yes. also have this Whatever. desire to invest on our digital assets, as, as somebody else was talking about, investing in our digital assets and knowing that if I have money in digital world, I can buy everything else. Once the population understands that there is money to be made, and now everybody knows taking my kids, and some of us, we went back there and we were walking tall. I, I grew up in a, a single mother who had nothing, and I brought her to America, and now she is one of the richest in our family. The whole of my family changed. Like It was just a quick fall, and even in the whole area, region, we are one of the best uh, region because People can see the Njoroges and others are saying we can't defeat us. Oh, and can you, uh, Njoroge, can you adopt me? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> Professor so, Njoroge, so out of, out of, out of the four, out, out of the four, hang on, hang on, my mom is 77. And my mom came to this country when she was 61. But she is the one who runs our Zoom family meeting. She oh. can, yes, she just sent, sent me a, a link there. She wants me in another meeting before I go back to Michigan. She, we, when there was pandemic, she was the one who was running the show. These mothers are the ones who are the center so, of everything. If oh, you do when, not when read, did you teach her technology? She, when she was 62, maybe 2007, 2008, as soon as she came here, we just started taking her through the, we taught her, her Excel, we taught her Facebook, we taught her YouTube. She could watch all her uh, programs in YouTube for 
for uh, you know church and everything now she runs her church on zoom and she speaks in kikuyu and she has all these other people so yeah even yesterday i couldn't stay in her place I, up to after four she told me i have a session with uh, some church minister so let me go so at it, it's also a mentor it, yeah, at 77 it is also a mentor story and every time we find her getting stuck, we bought her an iPad. She couldn't use it. We got her an Android. She couldn't use it. Now we got her an iPhone 13. She's saying that one she can work with. She read all her Bible in the in the. We try as much as possible to make sure she is in the system. And she converted all her sisters, the five sisters who are below her, because she's the first one. Uh, the last one is 65. They are all using the internet. Uh, they are able to use the digital platform. But also that has converted all of our first cousins, 44 of them, into the digital warriors. And this is what I'm saying. Don't worry about behind. Take your brothers and sisters and a neighbor around. I come here with this good news so that we can also create a digital world together. I'm sure I'm going to get money out of this because I'm a kikuyu. I can see points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, you have two points. You have two thousand two hundred people watching, oh right? And definitely now, two thousand two hundred people. No professor and Jorogi. By the time we leave this show, it will be watched by more than one million people all over Africa. And actually, and I, and and I actually, told and I told over ninety people on TikTok that we are going to create a digital platform with the Ugandans. I was telling Kenyans we're going to create a digital platform uh, for teachers, and they were saying, "Can you give us the job? Can you give us the job?" I'm saying, "No, no, no, <laughs> it's going to be done by Ugandans." But no, 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 give us. So that's the kind of hype they are waiting to see what we can do. They are really, really waiting to see what the the central. I told them about the central campus and five thousand teachers. They are ready to incorporate because digital world doesn't care about language, doesn't care about border, but it is hard to move the icon and to the to the needle to the right position. Professor yes, Jojo, Jojo, we are down to you. Professor and Jojo, <laughs> we have an amazing guest as well. Uh, what's yes. your contribution, sir? Your name and your contribution and where you are. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, I'm so excited that uh, among the 2,000 and 2,200 people watching right now, I'm excited to be part of this discussion, Honorable. We follow you very, very much. I follow you, your discussion usually on this forum. And uh, you're one of our legislators who are very intentional about uh, coming up with youth initiatives, especially in the space of technology. Now, uh, Professor Joroke, you're so welcome. We, we, we are so excited to be with you here. Your, your name, <laughs> sir. Your name, sir. My, my name is Peter Onduri. I'm a Luo, but from Uganda. Okay, that's a good one. Yes. I have another Luo from Uganda who is a teacher, and we are putting up a school in Arua. So, sure. <laughs> so, uh, get, get, get and whoever is in this program wants to join us, it's a social capital. Please join us. Join yes. us. Please join us. It's yeah, actually even, that is even better because I mean it is my line of profession. Uh, right. I have a, I have an institution that runs corporate training. There you go. That is that is in about uh, twenty-seven IT related courses only, mm -hmm. uh, including okay. digital including digital marketing of Jojo. <laughs> Jojo, I'm here, and uh, you talk about Fiverr is one, one of the things I use uh, surprisingly almost every day. It okay, that's really good. Are you, are you listed as a, a service provider there? I don't, I'm not listed. I'm a consumer. I You're consume. consumer. Oh, you need to be listed because I would really love to employ you guys. Sure, yeah. So I'm excited. I think I'm going to take that too serious. And, 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 and hold on to that. Hold on to that. Uh, Honorable Bonsere, what uh, these two business people are telling us is that we have an opportunity to list all our IT guys in our app. Yeah, and then we can, be, we can be selling that from here rather than them going to take a commission of 25%, right? They take a 25% of the commission for my work on Appworks and I think on Favor. So we should be able to create that digital platform for the Ugandans and bring in all the others. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, very noted, Professor. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, uh, I've also liked uh, some few reflections George has made. That is, uh, we should at least try to be intentional. 
about marketing our innovation as Ugandans. But uh, the good point is that we have legislators on the board. Uh, first of all, uh, the countries that are, are breaking grounds in innovation, mm -hmm. you realize that their governments are very intentional about uh, speeding up okay, their pace of innovation. First of all, you talked about uh, innovation hubs and what have you, where uh, Honorable Sereko asked you to articulate well. Uh, you realize that uh, it is kind of uh, a joint effort in those countries which are a bit developed. We have private players, but also the government has a very big, big involvement in ensuring that these infrastructures are working and are run by right people. That is the first thing also I should like to highlight. Uh, Mr. S uh, Honorable Seruk has had a very right choice of uh, what I should regard as our benchmark, that is South Korea. Mm. Uh, the history tells us that at the, at the time of our, when, when the wave of independence arrived in Africa, that is around 63, Kenya was at the same, actually Kenya was above uh, South Korea in terms of GDP. But uh, it's because it was of, above Canada. Ab and above Canada, for yes, that matter. Yes, 1972, it was above Canada. Above Canada, for that matter. But uh, you realize, because you, you can also still reflect to what uh, Honorable Seruka said, that, uh, you see, United Arab Emirates knows that when it comes to the front runners of innovation, they are not on the top there, but they are, the, the visionary leadership is being so intentional about getting them there. Yes. That is how, why they can afford to take their innovation hub and expose there so that they can be in position to source for the right skills and attract them to the region. That is one of the things I've seen. Now, uh, my major point, and Honorable Seriko, first of all, I'm excited that among all these people watching right now, you have to choose me. I think it was, uh, I should say, <laughs> God sent. I wanted to highlight on some few things. First of all, uh, Honorable, there's a program uh, I've been, I, I've, I, I wanted to initiate actually for, for all the regions of the country. That is about skilling the teachers, basically on how they can at least uh, look at that uh, area of uh, generating additional income on the content they create. First of all, they need to know that if you have a very right a uh, lively YouTube channel, Google can pay you. Other than just creating the tutorials, but on the number of viewership, Google can consider you because if you have a lot of people coming through your channel and watching your content, then Google can consider that an opportunity to push their ads there. So whether you are paid for your content or not, because even as who are self-taught in the things we are doing right now, we consume tutorials from other people, but how do they get money back? They get money back through viewership because when Google, for example, sees that you are having a lot of viewership on your content, which usually say is, is a, a national direction for an environment like schools because students always go to the platform to consume content in different media formats, especially the video format. So whether you've managed to sell the content direct or not, it means still through the viewership, you can be in position to earn off your content. That is the area I would like to look at. Then also, on the other hand, uh, Honorable Sereko, I, I don't know how uh, intention of the government is about, uh, you remember something that happened during the Obama administration to Tesla. Tesla mm -hmm. was supposed to be liquidated. I should say, I follow that story very, very well. And in one of the most heated debates, that was between Obama and uh, Governor Romney. Governor Romney was uh, against Obama's funding of Tesla. But the vision behind Obama's funding of Tesla was Obama looked at the employees who are behind Tesla, not Tesla as a, a company, but mm -hmm. basically they had to look at how many people win breads for their families through Tesla. Mm -hmm. So. As it stands right now, uh, Tesla has produced the richest person in this world. Mm -hmm. Not because not, not because government wanted to put money there to lift an individual, but to lift people who are behind that particular and in the individual. That is an area I should also like to look at that. 
what is government doing about lifting innovation in this country? Then uh, probably I would also like to shed some light on, uh, yes, Professor, you, you have uh, shared with us a lot of uh, information about digitization. Right. What, one other aspect I watched cautiously and I've been on a very close range watching is most of the institutions are, dig, are, are, are digitized, I mean, are digitalized, digitalized without being digitized because people seem to confuse the two. Mm, there is having the, they are digitized, I mean, they are digitalized without yeah. being digitized. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, we provide infrastructure for them, but we are not we are not intentional about skilling the person behind those machines. Right. You go to the off, you go to the police station, mm -hmm. and you find they have the right set of infrastructures they need. They have computers, they have printers, probably and copiers, but you still find they are so they are so like littered up with the physical copies of the documents, and you ask yourself, what are the intentions of having the IT departments, mm -hmm. when we can't think about an innovation where we can digitize the copies of these items, mm -hmm. probably, and we have somewhere in cloud, because mm -hmm. the good news is that uh, even when you don't pay for the cloud services, the cloud storage, mm -hmm. most of the platforms use this, they use freemium version of their, I mean, of their cloud storage to attract people who can buy and pay for additional space. So there is always something to start with. They give you the free space so that when you realize you consume that free space, you can go on and upgrade based on a need. So I, I, that, that is another direction, uh, honorable Sereko, being our legislator, our, our cream de la cream up there advocating for the youth initiatives. Uh, what is the government doing about uh, being digitalized without being digitized. One of the things, one of the initiatives. Otherwise, Jojo, I run an institution is called Da Vinci Institute of Technology, available on the link I'm going to share. <laughs> Basically, it is about technology. And one of the things we are trying to embrace is what we call a new global delivery model, whereby you be home, or you can be an institution in Africa, but work for institutions yeah. that are scattered all over and beat those outside competitors in terms of cost. You give them a better cost for the same delivery. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Sereko. Thank You're you, welcome. Professor. Thank you, Jojo. Thank you, Jojo. You're yeah. welcome. Uh, as usual, um, this will be called our Friday Think Tank. And you can see how it goes on. Uh, th there is a lot of what we call untapped resources uh, from people that uh, um, are fatigued from politics and others and i want us to encourage ourselves to make this a global platform and professor you know why oh and we're gonna course. speak all the english now no 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 not even all the english but <laughs> something understandable even to the person in india okay like, to the person in vietnam to the, the thing is that the, the audience here, if, if you let the audience uh, introduce themselves, they'll be telling you they're watching from all over the world. I am amazing. So, because it would be so amazing when everyone sits on this, because we are talking about technology. Yes, we are best in, you're best in the US, one in the UK, I'm here in Kampala. But we are speaking for the whole world of technology, best all over the world. And solutions you're creating, be it in uh, uh, cosmetics and toiletries, be it giving a lead in education. I want the name Professor Njoroge to be pronounced Njoroge, even if they can't say it. <laughs> but I want that Njoroge. Right. But I want it to be heard in China. I want it to be shared in TikTok. If you share this same... Uh, uh, uh link that we are having in tiktok so that it's being watched real time by your tiktok followers who are looped on instagram so that when we are on a think tank we are debating and inviting people from all over the world to make decent contribution so finally i'll give chiinji and uh, give, me, give me give me give me one question that i want to put to you uh honorable Seneca. as a 
professor who has been teaching for some time now, I always give my students assignments. There is one thing here you. before you, you, yes. you give me one. Okay. Give me that space once you he talk. Yeah. But um uh, sorry to say the previous guest who just left had left a question. I don't know if you noticed what he was asking. I don't know whether he asked a question or he said he made a statement. He was only applauding. I didn't hear him ask a single question. But he just said he talked about he probably has a question. Okay. Let's go. Uh but I, I don't know whether my my microphone is clear. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. First, I need to thank uh, thank you all more than uh, Mr. Sereko Honarivo because always you think about us as low thinkers. So I need to thank you. I need to thank Professor. I learn more in 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 this conversation, and I I I, I, I get to understand that now I'm still far from where people they they they, they are now. I need to thank you. So go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Anseriko, to organize such things like this, Jojo, I am interested in your words, Professor Moore. So for me, I just call just to thank you. I don't know how I can say. For me, I'm a technician mm. for phones. I learned in, in China for three years for designing, moderating and phones. And now I'm working in Rwanda. But as Africans, for me, I didn't study even because I was in Kampala Street, where the Chinese lady get me and take me there just to learn practical, even my English. Don't care about my English because I didn't even go in in nursery schools. You've done very well because your English is really good. If you if you just learnt it, well done. Yeah, I'm trying my best because that. Well I... done, you you've done really well. Thank you, thank you. So, for 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 always, I needed the the such. Things like this one, Mr. Honorable Nsereko, he organized such things. Where even the government does not think about it. This thing, this thing you are, you are talking about is touched to us. You are fighting it to us. Because because those those people who are in the offices, whatever, even if they don't know how to use those internet, you are you are you are talking about here. And if you you see very well, you will find out the people who are online now learning on this lecture. You will not find those people. They are sleeping for us because we are fighting for our life. We need to get each and everything from educated people. Thank you so much, Jojo. Thank you so much, Mr. Professor from, uh, I think he's in, from Kenya. He's in, he's in Michigan. Uh -huh. And in my honorable, Mr. Sereko. You are my honor, you are model, my model role. Because I was in Kampala since I was in three, since I was having three years. And maybe you, so, you, you um, have Sorry, it. are you, where are you now? In I'm Kigali. in Chigali. You're in Chigali? Chigali, Rwanda. You're doing well. The very, beauty, the very beautiful country and clean for Mr. Paul Kagame.
<laughs> They've done uh, well because right it, now the the UK government is sending all the refugees to 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 Rwanda. That one mm -hmm. I cannot talk to. I cannot talk about that because I don't know. Even I, I'm hearing, but I don't know what's going about uh, on it because people they are quite even. They are not. No, no, it's happening. Yeah, they, they know that we talk about that issue is different. I don't know whether it's good or not. I'm still on my little investigation about my knowledge. <laughs> so, Bwana Chindi, Rambo is a Murue of a Moshot. I want to say, Mumba. I want to say, Mumuganda Wango, Mani. A professor and Yoroge is trying to tell me in our language so that I'll try. I understand. I understand. No, no, no. I love, I love to encourage people to speak their language even, so that I can learn. There's no way I'll convince Jonjo to come into my things tank if she can't, I can't speak at least one language, one word in her. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. One, one okay. second. You, you speak. You speak in English. Let me come. One second. You speak, change it. Oh. Ask speaking, professor. Speak in Luganda <laughs> and then uh, and then Jojo can translate for me. Okay. Mbade mbade chengamba madam Jojo. Hmm. Ntife wetube wetube rangafe aba 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 ntu aba wansi. Hmm. Fetweta fetweta again yo kumanya bina ataba andi bade babieta aba because sa aba ina access gubio. Tebabi tebabi fako kubanga bali satisfied ne we bali ne we batu de nega ti mwe we muva yone muva ako chemu tuongera ako ne mu ne mu mugeza ako mu kola ebuli chisoboka ero muntu ana ate ate kayo mutima awa ako chafuna. So professor, he's saying that him him as a humble person from his humble background, he's very um intrigued to 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 learn more from from the program mm -hmm. and what hurts him is like he knows the people out there who actually have access to these are uh, computers and everything and they're not bothered about this right yeah yeah that's true and <laughs> Atengo kusoma tekugwa yo. Mm. E, tekukoma. E, buli, we, kusoma tekukoma buli kado ba weta go kuonge rako. So e his, nyo. his yeah, father akata. saying that um, we should keep seeking knowledge because you never know enough. We, we're always learning more. Always learning more. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it's true. Yes. And, and it's true. I have learned a lot, even like just meeting you guys, uh, the resilience of the Ugandan people has always surprised me. <laughs> we, we, we are special breed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are good people. I lived in Kampala and, and lived in Kasese and uh, even in Barara. And they were some of the best moments I have in my life. Yeah, okay. we are special breed, Ugandans. I keep saying that we are special breed. Chingy. Sebo. You are an amazing guy. But this is what we've been <laughs> talking really about. And we want you here. You know, like... But you one, see... Um... One time, Jojo, just a second. I was telling okay. you. Uh, when you look at the growth of South Korea, it's in the electronics industry. Those tigers. Yeah. Because now, let's look at the data. In every home, look at how many phones are there. How many televisions are there? How many decoders are there? How many remotes are there? Remote controls are there? Okay? Now, yes. that's why when we talk about technology, it's not only talking about the web, the internet. Of course, that's a driver to help you to access uh, information to ease your world of trade. But look at about what we call industrial technology as well, designing and fabrication, uh, mechanics like what he's doing. And uh, that's the strength of China. 
That's the strength of Korea. And I look at this gentleman. He probably did not attain the formal education. He knows how to practically operate this machine. He right. might yeah. not know a lot of literature about it. But he's, he's a phone he, technician. Just, just a second. He'll open this phone. He'll know where the motherboard is. He knows where to touch in each and every phone. He may not know how to call it motherboard, but he knows to in a <laughs> yes, well. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I mean, and this is what we need in the world. Whether yeah. it's in India or it's in China or it's in Africa or in Vietnam, we need the skilled persons. And this is where the, uh, the, the previous speaker talked about skilling, the ordinary skilling of these people that should start at elementary level. It starts by removing the phobia, fear. Remove the fear out of his heart by giving him this phone and tell him, dismantle it. Open it. Look at it. Tell us what you can do. Teach him the few electronics, how, you know, the movement of power, which we would call phys elementary physics in class, the movement of power from this place to another. Because um, look, at, look at how many chargers. Jojo, how many chargers do you have in your home? Oh, please. Uh, more than you think. Probably 15. 15 chargers. Yeah, because and, my children have laptops, tablets, phones. Yeah. Like, I how, think between how, all of us, we have five And how many of those of chargers have you spoiled since holding a phone? Half of them are not I working. No, because we share them between each other. <laughs> Half of them are not working. All right? I, I think they are, but if I run out of charge, I get my daughter or my husband's. I'll there's always a charger. In 90% in, in of the homes, half of the chargers are not working. But let mm. me ask Mr. Chinge a question. Mr. Chinge, can you fix a broken charger? Of course. Because I'm, I'm, one, of, I'm one of who made those chargers. I can make myself the charger. I can even make the phone. You can. You hear that? You hear that? You remember the other day, Honorable I told you, I told you the other day when I was in Cassese, one of my biggest challenges, we get copper from there. Nowadays, we don't mine it from Cassese mines, uh, Chilembe mines. I think the Chilembe they are there, right? And then if but the copper that is still there, we still can make our motherboards, our chargers, our electric car, or whatever cause, and we can actually create enough computers for Uganda without importing one in Uganda. And that is, TNG is one of the examples of people that you will use in Uganda to create that platform. So our work is just to provide him with that place where he can do the thing, get him the equipment, and that's it. That's what, and tomorrow Uganda is the largest computer uh, manufacturer in the world, and we are still here borrowing. Yes. So, yes. Mr. Chiji, you can make a phone. Yes. I, I can make a phone, and now I have my, uh, how, can, how can I call it? <laughs> yes, yeah, in Uganda. Yeah. Jagala kola che imade ni no bongo wendi mu kati ndi mukuchi mukuchi zimba ndabenga nkola drone zizi no that he is he is uh, let me translate further uh, Mr mm. Chingi is saying that not only is he making phones but he's mm -hmm. invented technology to start making drones Yes, that is that is very Chingi. simple technology drone is you look as recording a camera yeah. Yeah. yes is a drone is a zibuka era nga nina we nina we njitu seka katono nen wakubanti pechitu menya ye because they say very very expensive nenga atebu for kubifu na chiba chizibuka so tuko they say a katono ketulina noteka mo wongo wongji okusobolo kuzimba okutuka kuchewe itaga and that he has attained that, that he has moved, uh, he has tried to develop this technology at a given level, but he is 
impeded or uh, he has challenges of the expense so, of the input. So, so uh, what I have here in Michigan and I was working with my school to introduce is that same to drone technology manufacturing in Nairobi. So we are talking about the same thing. So we are seated here blaming the government, but a drone doesn't require internet. It requires somebody to sit down and put it together and fly it. Exactly. With some sensors, some motors, and that's it. And most of the materials, we don't need the plastic. We can use bamboo, and Uganda is one of the largest producers of bamboo. We can use that as a technology. So with a guy like this one, we can easily put up together a manufacturing plant. Somebody is asking whether we are going to assemble or we are going to manufacture. No, manufacture it from zero. You guys who grew up in the 70s, our radios were made of, you remember I had a plywood. Our yes. mother bought on plywood. Yes, we can do that. We can produce our computers on plywood and put the motherboard there. The motherboard is nothing than electrical connections of transistors and all this. And we can make them in Uganda. You remember last time, uh, Honorable Nsereko, I said about it? And I said we can do it in Kastesa, not even in Kampala. Yes, I, I'm glad now change is there. Now somebody in Kigali is confirming that he is a Ugandan. I told you about it last time. I uh, absolutely. And, and that's why I appreciate talking transboundary, because you might leave out some people who are of right. great value. So, Mwami Chinji, na ya Gambie, ndoza bobato chitegele kankuvu nulide, au mkuru wa Gambie, ndi naboche baba Devali ke Michigan, yoku zimba drones, nga baga lozitu wa labazi zimbe Kenya. Get, so, get, his, get his number and then we can work with him. We will definitely get him off the ground. So, mami chini sebo ofuni dewo mukisawa gani tufuni na baio? Obadi akuwa sindi kaji ake? Ah, ah. Chuoende. I am. If you want us to come to Kigali, we will come. I am of uh, of technicians and people who can work with you are very big, so you can do it. I am. I am Lula. And I'll give you a number of people are of doers of the labor. Somebody mentioned about the labor. I think it's Jojo. We have very good, efficient laborers in Africa. They may not be the best because they are not working in the factories, but they are the, they are the most, uh, I can say, agile. They can do anything at a fraction of the cost. Yeah, we can do it to change. Thank you so much. Well, Mr. Okay. Be, be, uh, I tried to, to, to... Say, it in, say it in Uganda, they will translate it. <laughs> say it in Uganda. But let me practice also my language. Okay. Yes. Practice your English. <laughs> my English language. Yeah. They, they, yeah, I, I tried to, I first tried to, 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 to make speakers and mm -hmm. woofers. Mm -hmm. That one, what you call a music system, woofers, yes. I, I can build this, the very small thing, but very powerful. The very, yes, I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. So, I can so, do it with more powerful. I did it myself because I didn't, where I, yes, that one. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. I can make it very powerful, and I didn't go to to study anywhere. But I I touch some uh, woofer, then I look on it. I say, why? If other people can do this one, why why not me? Then I try myself. First, I fail. It come like a vr, vr, vr. <laughs> <laughs> I, how, I, how did it I come, Chinji? A... Wait. <laughs> and somebody is giving you the, a grant. Somebody is giving you a grant of $2,000. Simon Kampala. How, how did yes. it come when you tried? I, I built according to the other one I was following. <laughs> but maybe I put very small resistance, whatever this is, transistors. Then the, the, if I, I when the time I, I reach to put my my output, 
it's, it didn't it come like uh, the way I want. It started brr, brr, brr. <laughs> then I started. I search. I search where the problem. Mister G, by the way, that can be so your funny. trademark. What you've developed can be yeah. the content for me in this technological space. That statement you've said that when you switched it on, what did it it's do? <laughs> it wanted to bring a sound. <laughs> So, <laughs> so let, me, let me give you the final assignment, Mr. Chinja. Oh, he has lost his taking uh, connection. So, Chinja, we still need that, that <laughs> something that is amazing. Now, that can but be. You see the the um the level of inspiration and motivation a person He's like amazing. him can He's have amazing. on on the audience and the young people is is unbelievable. Let me let me, let me tell you, George. If you live in the street Change of Kampala, let, let me, hang on, I have another bonus record. The people in on the streets of Kampala, those are the people on the streets of Kampala. If you went there, you would find a thousand guys like. Yeah. We are the people who are learned who don't know our country. Guaranteed, if you go there, you're going to find a thousand of them. And we are here sitting in our digital platforms of, of avoiding where the cream, the cream is. Those are the people on the ground. So, Honorable Sereko, what I would really want out of this conversation is in Africa, we are very good at talking. Mm. No Africa. Mm. No action. Talking, no action. Team, what is the one thing? Back. Yeah. What is the one thing I would like us to do before, so that we can also be updating the next thing tank? I would have wanted to pick change, for example, and we see what kind of support he needs to start making his phones and the chapter. And we start with him and build him a place, even if it is just a small shop, and make sure that we start following up on the prototypes and see what we can scale up and what we need to import. If we are not going, somebody is protesting when I say the bamboos, we can still get the plastics and still work on that. What do we need to put in place to get this guy going and start manufacturing for him? That is what he needs, a supporting infrastructure and the financing. And I'm sure the financing he's looking for is not $100,000. It is probably $20,000, it's $5,000, which we can raise in this forum. The people in this forum, I'm sure, if we assigned ourselves 2000 or 1000 and we say within three months we raise that money, I'm sure we can do that. What I want us to give ourselves is a practical approach of our solutions. Can we either get TNG going or can we find a digital space place where we can put our young people to start working on one? Innovation hub, eh? Yes. Even if it's a small office, put in internet, get five guys, let's start developing our teacher's application from the start. And that is what we can be reporting on this think tank and say, hey, guys, we have gotten to this point. At some time, we invite the guys to come and tell us what they've done or the demo they can prepare, a YouTube video, say, share with us, and we can ask questions. That way, we stop just talking. The other countries, the difference is they do. They do. Okay, now, what um, in Kenya, you've got that digital hub. Mm -hmm. But we don't have anything in Uganda where we can get all these brains assembled. No, no, no. Uh, the, the That's research, what I'm talking about. We set there up an is, office. Uh, Professor and Grace, I, I'll bring him Dr. Grace here. Come okay. here. Uh, mm. He's in Makere. At least he has tried a little on his own, eh? but using it as a hub and others. But what Professor is talking about is the strategic policy. Is Let's start. We that are here. Now, we let's as start the, out. Mm -hmm. and say we have an innovation hub we've gotten a warehouse let's say in mm -hmm. industry yes wherever Put it is we have mm -hmm. high speed internet mm -hmm. and that's it and we have where they can sit and where they right. have some water to drink 
that's how it starts. You have thousands coming in there to showcase. Yeah. They can so get the, far the, the, easiest, the easiest is to get that hub and make it accessible to digital students. They come yeah. in for free. They just have an office with some data connection or power connection, and that's it. You only pay the lease if you are having a go down, or we can get it from one of our friends to give us, renovate the, the office, put internet. If we don't have the fiber, let's put in a visa. Share the bill for the internet. Then the digital people, they come and register themselves, and that is, they can now give us their applications. What I usually do is tell them, give me an application, tell me what it is, and we start financing them. Some of them will make money before we know. Before we know, it will be an outsourcing center because most of these people that you see on IAB, some of them don't do uh, applications. They just go in there and just do in the application or they just do work for, 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 for another international company. And in the process, we are now developing that area. And we now can show the government, this is what we are doing. This is how much income it has generated. Can you invest in it? If they don't, other companies like us, we can form a bigger company and start charging some rent and make sure that these hubs are all over the country. Make one in Arua, make one in Kasese, Fort Porto, uh, Barara. You know what I'm saying? Put them ginger, enter it. Then you have the people in those small areas, even if it is like a small office of, say, 10, you know, 10 seats. So long as people are given two hours, you sit there or three hours, you develop, and if you want more hours, you can come at night. So, so long as there's security and there is internet, you can start with that. And therefore, the application that, say, Jojo is talking about, or Honorable Insereko is talking about, we could get these students or these people. Usually, the students at the university or colleges are the ones who are using it. And in two years, they are the ones who are going out there and doing their job. Why not? Let's start something. No, absolutely. I, I hear you out. And um, like I told you, I had started creation of a fellowship of software engineers, the young ones, the younger products that have come out. And yes, Jacob, Bob's. What's your real yes. name? My name is Semambo Jacob. Who? Semambo Jacob. Semambo Jacob. Semambo Jacob. Yes, yes. Why, yes, why yes, are you? Why are you zungutizing it? <laughs> you know, like he said, my name is Mjorog. Is that what you're saying? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, it's just that the, the community, I mean, like, it's kind of like more English best. Oh, where are you, Mr. Sema? Yeah. Uh, we didn't I, I don't think i would like maybe i don't think whether it would be like so nice to maybe tell where i am but yeah. right now i'm in russia what is wrong with being in russia no i mean to be no visible okay, just, tell tell don't worry about that. just okay. tell us we know so, you, you know we are an african going out there to look for food there's no african no, who is no, outside it, africa it, it's not about food it's not about food <laughs> Well, uh, I came like kind of late, but then I was trying to follow the, follow the conversation like which was going on between like Miss Jojo and then Professor. But then I would like to maybe ask Mr. Honorable Sereko about like some things that the government has done for us. Well, I don't think whether there are some international relationship academic wise between uganda and some other and some other western 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 powers let me say like uk russia um usa now for example mrs jojo was like she was trying like to look for some employees ugandan i think to do for to do for her like some job right but then she was looking for for, for a ugandan but then it turned out that she was like receiving like Nigerians, Egyptians, and so forth. Well, Mr. Nsereko, are there some like some international relationship academic wise? Maybe let me say like maybe there are some scholarships that are given to Ugandan students, you understand, to go and study more further. Now, if you see the case of Chinji, he went to China, you understand? To widen his brain more about like well his sector the sector is doing right now 
So simanyo over echo government ya fetchio was a konyo rather mm. than just lobbying like money. You understand? Now well, to you, me, you, like personally you have a great point. Uh what yeah. I know is that uh they are there, but the way they are handled, mm -hmm. no one knows. In any case, are they the scholarships we need, you know, mm -hmm. that are skill based like what Ching got, you know? But in any case, instead of sending our children to study abroad, which would be expensive, can we get the trainers from abroad to come and transfer the skills at home? For me, if it were me, unfortunately it's not, I would hire the guys with the skills to come here and teach as many people as possible. In that way, you would be spending on five guys to come here and teach a thousand. You understand? Skill transfer, knowledge transfer. Rather than getting a thousand Ugandan, then you pay. Or in any case, then you trade off for scholarships, which in return would require goodies. You know, when they give you a scholarship, if a country mm -hmm. gives you a goodie, you have to return something, maybe vote with them or do something for them. You understand? A scholarship yes, is non-financial aid. It's financial, but they are trying to give you something in form of people, in form of education. In my case, would be better off them coming and we invest in vocational education, transfer of skills, even if it's technology, but giving us people that can give us knowledge at a lower cost. If I got 10 of them, let's say software engineers that can teach a uh, full stack, or if we mm -hmm. had industrial designers and technology. So we took only one change to China, courtesy of someone who cared, who saw that this guy was intelligent and he needed to give them skills. But assuming we got the guys from China who did in manufacturing, but to come here to teach our people how it is done, we would get those guys, take them to say in Bugwejo, where they would teach 1,000 other same members at a cheaper cost. Now, Skill and now, technology Mr. transfer. Mr. Honorable, let me ask you something. Like, how do you see if, like, we we take, like, 10 Jacobs outside, then they come back? Because, like, me after, like, getting the knowledge I came to get here, I'm supposed to go back home. No. And the, implement the, whatever the, listen, I've from here. 90% of the people that are sent mm -hmm. to acquire skills, mm -hmm. only 5% return. Why? Mm -hmm. After acquiring, <laughs> assuming you went there and started to be mm -hmm. a radiologist, and then you return back home in Uganda. A radiologist is paid in Mengo and other hospitals just $150. But a radiologist in the UK is paid $4,000. Assuming we sent you there to study and you qualified, let's be very fair to you. Would you return and work for $130? No, of course I can't like in the first place. Now that then, is the now I that have, is the if I have, like, my... but if we carried just five radiologists to train three thousand radiologists in Uganda, we would get the same product, employ a few, then externalize others in form of expatriates. That is sustainable. Pardon? I get your point, sir. Amazing. I mean, that would be replacement of what we are having. To the worst, then, would rely on the same members, you know, um, mercy and uh, being uh, kind to say, I'll teach them online if I have time, because he's a patriotic citizen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sir Mambo. We'll knock out from there. I'm one of them who is teaching online. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so thank you very so, much. So, Honorable, before, as, before as, we as we wind up the program for tonight, yeah, so that before, we prepare uh, for next leave, Friday. Yes, what, we'll just what say something. Can we do? What can we do to get the, the younger people interested in um, digital era? Because 
like now this is online it's being watched by so many people over the world mm -hmm. but you will find they will choose to be watching something ridiculous on tiktok oh, yeah. over <laughs> that's not true that's not true in my class of 400 students okay 72 percent have enrolled for banda like i told them who how many want to do the digital classes 72 percent are ready to 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 learn so the assumption that we see them on tiktok and all that is boring is because it's boring they don't have anything else to do but if we give them something to do they okay. will do they will do my my conviction is different me, I find it's, it's a challenge i find it's a challenge to put out like knowledgeable information to the youth they don't seem interested they don't think they want to engage because we don't I don't ask know. them we, we, we don't ask them we don't go to them to to ask them for example the first thing i did with my school i asked them i listed some of the services and i asked them what do you think you can enroll for and i knew 72 73 percent so i knew even if i made the computer studies mandatory at least i had the support of 72 percent the rest there's always going to be someone saying no at the same time if you give them a, a tablet and you allow them to see youtube they're gonna go to the funny jokes so you as a teacher, you have to provide the direction in class and make sure that they do not get access to that other space, but also keep them busy. They are young minds. If you don't engage them, the world will engage them. So the key is us as the drivers, how do you drive the process? They are much more interested. I have more students training other students than the teachers themselves, actually. Yeah, because my, my it's, it's mm -hmm. the, the only way this can be successful is introducing it to the young people at a really young age and getting yes. them engaged at a young yes. age. And yes. for me, I find it a challenge. Sometimes you do videos talking to them about mm -hmm. business. And when you talk anything serious, they won't tune in. Let me if you tell want you. to talk, have something silly, they'll all be there. And I'm like, Let are me... they not interested in to better themselves? Yeah, those are the Western children because they are spoiled of chances. They have all these opportunities. Let's run the first show, Honor uh, Bonsereko, in your Kampara constituency. Make sure you get a, a place. Let's pay for it. Invite the, uh, the senior one, two, three for digital learning and yes. tell them it's free. You will be shocked at the number. There will be 100,000. You'll be shocked at the numbers. We, we are lying to ourselves when we use data from the Western world to simulate it and uh, make decisions for our young people in Africa. That's the most enterprising group right now of the youth. They are the drivers of the economy. Those ones are on another level. That's true. As we wind up, Professor, for tonight, uh, it is, uh, this side, it's uh, 2 in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to state categorically clear that our think tank will always sit. Uh, thank you, Jojo, for having been a good student. We'll introduce you, we'll share the link that we use on Zoom as well. We wanted to just tell people that we are out there going to start our lessons uh, on Zoom uh, so that we go online and our facilitators will be there. But we'll always be coming back for the think tank. Change wherever you are. Just find us in box. If you can't find me, pass. find uh, Jojo or uh, Professor Anjoroge. Uh, you can go through TikTok, wherever you are in Kigali, because you, your line was cut. But we appreciate minds like you. So resolutions from here. One is creation of an innovation and IT hub. If we cannot find any, we could uh, partner with someone that can do it. Let's say an institution to set it off. Two is to start what we call systematic digital literacy by starting with uh, people that are near us. And um, I'll, 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 I'll start by starting registration uh, of stay home moms that are there in within my constituents, teachers, because moms are the people that normally interface with the children. When they come back home, they have a lot of time and the elderly. So we'll go to the elderly the children in schools who are, you know, uh, interfacing with teachers. Like I said, my 5,000 teachers, I'll create a meeting and uh, get to meet them. I know the network of how to meet them. Then we shall project uh, a lecture for you to take them through and other facilitators. And then every Friday we'll be coming back. And I can tell you, if we want to uh, generate even what we want, 
if you have 5,000 people that are digitally connected, I can tell you, you can hold a class of 10,000 people digitally. And I'll yes. show you how it works in a very short time. So today we might be speaking to, uh, like I said, when we're beginning, it's not the numbers. It is the quality of the numbers that move yeah. development. Okay? Yeah. That is why I gave you the example of the 53.7 million South Korean versus yeah. the 1.3 billion. And I repeat, yeah. just 53.7 million. Meaning there is something they are doing that is special. That they start from childhood. And all of us that are here, our homework, go back and study the story of South Korea. Those are the countries we should be studying in school in history. How did they make it in their recent history? So that that can help us shape our future. Thank you very oh, yeah. much, um, Professor Anjoroke. We are very much yeah. indebted to you. Thank really you for good. your time. Thank you, entrepreneur Jojo from the UK. I hope this um, helps. Mm, please do. Uh, on the 18th of June this month, I'll mm -hmm. be, um, I've been invited to, uh, to attend and to represent my company at the Birmingham Black Business Show. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the second of its kind. It's for only black businesses because now the the government in the UK is pushing all the minorities. So I've, I've been recognized as one of the <laughs> black business entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy to be like, I'm going to be the only Ugandan at the Birmingham Black Business Show. So I all, all the people in the UK, if you want to attend and you need tickets, I've got 20 guest ticket passes if you need one. Mm -hmm. Contact me and I'll get you a ticket to come in. Come see me, do my thing on a massive UK platform. And in London, we're going to be at the Excel Center in October, 20th October. I'll be representing the UK Black Business Entrepreneurs. I'll be there. Probably I'll get an award again. Last year, I won Milton Keynes Business of Black Business Entrepreneur and I won Black Business. So I'm pushing on. So this month, 18th of June, I want you guys to come. Come and see how we black people are doing in the UK. Don't sit there and say, oh, UK is hard. Come and see us shine. Come and see. And we, and also we have another, sh we have another thing happening next year. It's called Born in Africa, Made in UK. I'm going to be there. This one is specifically for people born in Africa and they've made it in the UK. So I'm going to be there as well. I'll be sharing with you the debts. So I want other Ugandans out there to don't be shy, like this digital space is ours. Let's take up the digital space. Jojo, we shall be there with you physically. <laughs> I, arrive, I, I arrive on the 19th of June in the UK. Ah, uh, you're gonna miss it, it's uh, 18. I'm gonna miss it, it's very unfortunate ah, because that's what my ticket shows. <laughs> Uh, I, I set off, inshallah, God willing, on the 18th and I'll arrive yeah. on the 19th. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, I, want, I want people to come and attend because but, sometimes when we are here, people are intimidated to it's, start It's only one here. day? Yeah, it's one day, but then there's 20th October, the Black Business Entrepreneurs. Then next year we have uh, Born in Africa, Made in UK show. Yeah. And if you can get it for us online... Uh, I'll, I'll try attending. because I'm going to be busy. It's, it's no, you should get someone to get it. I'll, I'll, I'll be having, I'll be having a camera crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this will... is this is the biggest I've done, and also there is a European one. Uh, we'll share black it as much as possible. In Europe, yeah, coming on soon. Thank you very much. Uh, endeavor to create as many contacts as possible. I'll leave you with this, uh, Professor Angeloge. Yesterday at the Italian day. Uh, we made a host of ambassadors, ambassadors from uh, and uh, representatives and high commissioners from countries. And something surprising is that uh, the ambassador of uh, Egypt told me that they're in a shortage of tons of beef daily. Mm -hmm. Egypt imports, I think, is one of the biggest importers, net importers of beef in the world. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and they're in a shortage. Now, that is where technology data comes in of beef. Mm -hmm. In Uganda, we have about 14 million heads of cattle. If we exported mm -hmm. just 2 million heads of cattle, mm -hmm. of beef, finished and processed beef, annually, even if it was 1 million, would make not less than $2 billion in form of export revenue. Now, Sound. that is for us to think about. You understand? Right. Yes. That is food for thought. Right. And that is to our neighbors. But look at the impediment. We talked about the Great North Road. You have mm. to fly it by air because it is impossible between Uganda, South Sudan, and Sudan to Egypt. And you can see no train connectivity, no road connectivity. It has to be flown. Probably they have to use the C-130s, the military aircraft, to they come do. and pick beef. Mm. <clears throat> they are the second, I think third largest also net importers of tea in the world. And yeah. most of the tea they consume is imported from Kenya. It's actually 40% of the tea exported by Kenya is not Kenyan tea. It's Ugandan so, tea repacked. Into yes. Kenya. Uh, that is how smart <laughs> Professor Anjiroga would like to commend the Kenyans for being sharp. So I, I looked at it and said, wow, Uganda's net trade with Egypt is less than, is about 100, between 70 and 100 million dollars. And Kenya's mm -hmm. net export on only tea to mm -hmm. Egypt is 167 million dollars. I leave you with that as food for thought, as I leave my uh, wonderful classmates today, Jojo, uh, to go and contemplate as you prepare for the showdown. But I would like to appreciate everyone that has attended. We've gone on for hours and hours. Thank you very much. You're winding upwards, uh, Professor. I, I, I commend you. Thank you so much for giving me this platform and I'll be available anytime you, import, uh, you want me to provide this knowledge to also give you an update of how I'm doing it in Kenya, to also give you an update of how we are doing it here in the United States. What I have seen, and this is not just you guys, Africans, we have a habit of self-hate. We don't think we can do it ourselves, especially in Africa. We think Ruzungu can do that. The truth is... Your, your, your to... son is there to say bye. <laughs> Tienji. Tienji is back. Tienji, give us your number because your phone might fall again. <laughs> it might do... <laughs> what is your number? Tienji. Uh, hello? Yes. Right for us. Give us your phone number. I'm back. I'm back. Uh, I was going to to die where, where if you go without saying bye to the Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. die. Don't die. Especially Jojo is here. Don't die. To jo to Jojo and the, my uh, the professor. For sure, let me say like this. This is my first time. Oh, Chinji, before you go off, can you share your numbers you talk? Speaking my Uganda. number is, you put the code for plus two five seven eight six six seven Six six nine three. For those for those who are not understanding this language, <laughs> let me I think tell they them in, in Uganda because they, we I have seen one two five people who are watching right live. Zero musambu musa zero musambu munana mukaga. Ah ah, tota de kodi 
Hey, hey, Masamu Munana Mukaga Mukaga Musamu Mukaga Mukaga Mwenda Satu Mwenda Satu Ok Mwenda Satu Professor Kategit Yes, I, I had uh, Mukaga Mukaga Mwenda Satu Change your rabbi. Obesimo Ranang, or rabbi, or Lidaka, or Vuo Vidi de Conga Simu Yoto Jefuni. Jojo, thanks for that vision. The Mutaka again, the far Ponega to Mukwate Mango. So, so, so I, I want to encourage you uh, who is watching us, and thank you so much for giving us your attention. And what I really get encouraged is when we see people like TNG who are making it with almost zero education compared to any of us. And his, if, if you look at his input, if you look at how he say capital and return, you invested 1,000 or 10,000 and you got 12,000. In his case, he invested 1,000 and got 1 million. Because out of his education, look at what he is doing. So... This is a, an, a, a spirit of hope from our Africanness. We have done this before. And for those who have not attended any of my history lessons, uh, African history, you will learn if you ever attend, and I'm going to share the, the link soon. You will learn why you are where you are and why we have succeeded the way we have succeeded. So I want to encourage all of you to be positive. Stop the self-hate. We can do it. We can obviously sit together here, come up with a program, support TNG, and own the company that he is producing, make him rich, and even in the process, we make a lot of money. The, the products or the software that uh, Jojo is using, we could adapt and instead of selling uh, cosmetics, we can use it, you can use uh, to sell uh, our electronic things that we can produce from Uganda. If we can do that, we can export that. Copper, there's a lot of copper in Zaire or in DRC Congo. So if we don't have enough in Kirem Remain, we can um, go. Sorry, Professor, one more thing I wanted to say, sorry. Um, I like Chinji so much because he, he was explaining to us, to, to us in his own English. We have a problem in Africa, and I've seen it on social media so many times. Mm. You see, right now, I, I usually don't do my videos even speaking English and I've got so many Ugandans watching me now and they're surprised how good my English is because most times they watch me and I'm speaking Luganda. I choose mm. to speak Luganda, not that I can't speak English. But I've seen comments before where people, especially us Africans, they under, underestimate, underlook somebody because their English is not good, where right. they think English is a measure of intelligence. So right. I see it so many times, especially on social media, when somebody's trying to speak or, or they even type, and the English is not good. And then you see all the, all the English professors come up or trying to correct you or you're not speaking right. They assume the person is not intelligent enough because they don't speak good English. Mm. That is, Chiyinji is a very good example where we need to stop the mindset of where people assume you need to be speaking very good English. You have to be articulate. You have to be eloquent in order to, to come off as intelligent. Mm -hmm. And it's also a problem that's why we've loved him. He's come on here. He's told us what is that he's not even educated. He's got this China lady take him to China, helped him out. He's come back and he knows what he's doing. We have so many people who are caught up thinking, I have to speak good English. I have to be eloquent. But they don't have skills to yes. survive in the modern world. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and that, that's the point uh, I'm talking about, that we need to, be, um, to feel empowered and to be encouraged to do these things. One of the things I would really, really pray on Arabon Serek and Jojo, let's take up the three of us, the case of Chiyinji, and let's make happen. Let's make an example out of it. Let's say who is 
the think tank came up with the actual solution. Let's get him somewhere. Let's finance him. Let's see what he can do. Let's get because under him. him. He <laughs> can train like what um, the honorable are saying that one right. change can train another right. thousand people. We, if we get a high school, we could get a bunch of people who are able to do exactly what he does. And he will teach in his local language, Luganda, and teach other Ugandans in that language, and they will enjoy the, the teaching. One of the reasons why we are successful in Kenya on this particular uh, program for IT is I have insisted as the lead uh, owner of the school, I have insisted that they be taught in the local language do not teach us in english teach it take the mouse and teach it in a in a in a kikuyu or teach it in swahili but do not teach in english but if you if you understand english that's fine but you're saying do not we are not an english lesson class we are an it lesson class and therefore transfer the technology and leave the english lesson to the english teacher so yeah, so some of these things are going to be creativity within ourselves to ensure that we deliver the knowledge that we need to deliver it. When we come to teach, if I was able to speak in Uganda, I was going to teach in Uganda. I was not going to teach in, in English. I was going to teach in the language that most are comfortable with so that we worry about technology terms and not so we don't have to worry about photosynthesis when it is just the, 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 the thing that happened in the in the plant i don't care about that so again closing words is let let us be encouraged um honorable telecom george let's take this uh, uh, uh as a, our challenge the chiyinji case let's run with it and guys let us be encouraged to do something for uganda don't worry about the africa for now let's do it for uganda and let's roll it out okay guys um i would like to say i give you a high five for tonight, you're all great. May the good Lord bless you. Until next Friday, catch you then. Ciao, Thank ciao. Bye-bye. So Bye. Good night.